The holidays are here, and you could probably use some extra cash. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint is giving away $500 cash. Not once, not twice, but every week now through Christmas. Ooh, ooh, Mountain ooh. Mobile Auto Glass and Tint is known for having great incentives like dinners and movies, full service car washes, or $100 in window tint. But did you know all of our technicians are certified by the National Auto Glass Safety Council? Why? Because Auto Glass is a major factor in your vehicle's collision support. And because your family's safety is our number one priority. And whether you've been naughty or nice, you'll get a chance to win $500 cash given away each week now through Christmas. Call Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent today. 536 Summit Healthcare is committed to your healthcare experience from start to finish. They invite you to take advantage of the Summit Healthcare Retail Pharmacy. The pharmacy is conveniently located in Summit's outpatient pavilion, just steps away from the hospital, and most of Summit's clinics. They accept most insurance, including Medicaid, Medicare Part B, Medicare Part D, First Care, and IHS. Prescriptions are ready in just minutes, and you get curbside delivery too. The Summit Healthcare Retail Pharmacy, because Summit is committed to meeting your pharmaceutical needs. This is Sports Zone Radio. Radio. Champions play here at Sports Zone Radio. It's time to tee it up and kick it off. It's time for the Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week. Presented by Hatch Toyota. Sports Zone Radio brings you unmatched coverage of football from around the White Mountains and beyond. No one does it like Sports Zone Radio. And now you can live stream HD video of our broadcast coverage exclusively at sportszone123.com and on the Sports Zone Radio mobile app. All part of the Hatch Toyota Friday Night Football Show. The Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week is presented by Hatch Toyota. Chaz Hatch refuses to lose a deal over a dollar. Hard-hitting broadcast coverage of White Mountains football is up next. Now, let's take you out to the field and join our broadcast team for tonight's Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week. if you heard it or not, but the National Anthem has just concluded here as we get it underway on tonight's broadcast of the Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week. It is presented by Hatch Toyota. And I want to welcome you and everybody tonight to Sholo High School. This is Sholo Forge Stadium as we get set to kick off a big quarterfinal showdown between the number four ranked Sholo Cougars and the number five team in the bracket. That is the Paradise Honors Panthers. The captains meet at midfield. You see that number 12 on the Paradise Panthers quarterback there, one of the captains. He is a junior. His name is Gage Baker, and he has put up some ridiculous video game-like numbers this season, helping to lead that Paradise Honors offense. This young man is a dangerous weapon that his team hopes can be effective tonight against a fast and physical Sholo Cougars defense. The winner of this game moves on to the semifinals and a likely showdown with the number one team in the bracket, the Thatcher Eagles, who are yet to be defeated this entire season. Down on the field, the coin toss completed. Paradise Honors will get the football first when we get underway here in just a moment with tonight's broadcast. 
of the Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week. It's presented by Hatch Toyota. It's part of the Friday Night Football Show here at Sports Zone Radio. And the energy is starting to amp its way up. And it's been pretty high anyway. And if you're wondering, if you're out there watching this, obviously you're not here at the stadium. And let me give you some idea of the conditions that we are undertaking and and uh, you know, attempting to endure tonight here for the broadcast. It is below freezing already right now here at the stadium. I believe it is currently 31 degrees, and I'll have an update on that as we get to kickoff here. One of the things that I do not want to be doing if I'm playing in this game, I don't want to be one of the place kickers, okay? I don't want to be one of those guys that has to that has to kick that frozen, cold stone of a football. But somebody's got to do it. And the Shola Cougars, as a team, they're getting set to do it first. And the young man that gets that job, the sophomore Calvin Morgan, will tee it up, kick it off, and get us underway here on tonight's broadcast of the Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week. Again, it is coverage of the 3A state quarterfinals tonight. Number four, Sholo. Number five, Paradise Honors. Sholo got here after a 56-7 win in the first round last week over the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets. Paradise Honors escaped with a 26-24 win over Payson in the first round last week to get to this point. And the opening kick is taken back. We are underway. Quarterback Gage Baker is going to lead his offense out for Paradise Honors. And they'll begin at their own 28-yard line after a very modest return. Welcome in, everybody. Floyd Simmons here on the play-by-play call. I'll be joined by my broadcast partner momentarily. B squared, Byron Brown will be with us tonight here at Sholo High School. Motion from the right flanker position to a wing and from the shotgun, Baker takes the first snap. He gets pressured up the middle and he is going to run straight up the field and gain a first down on his first opportunity. The quarterback gains 14 yards. And his team, the Panthers, have moved the ball out across the 40-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 48 as we get it underway, everybody. Welcome in to Sholo High School for this one tonight. And Baker giving his Panther faithful here in attendance. And they've got a great crowd, giving them something to cheer about. And now he delivers one on a crossing route, now toward the sideline. And then finally driven out of bounds after more first down yardage. Two big plays to start this one out. That is a gain of 11 yards this time. And good for the first down on the receiving end. Garrison asked a junior from the junior quarterback. And they move the chains again. And guess what? The Panthers already on their second offensive play have moved into Sholo territory. So this opening possession has started out was something to cheer about if you are a, a, a Panther fan. And they are in Cholo territory already. Man in motion across the formation. It's kind of a modified pistol formation for the Panther offense. And they'll give it for the first time to their leading rusher, Vance Cooper. And Vance is going to get stood up right in the middle and give the Cholo fans something to get a little bit excited about. It's a short gain. On this play, we're going to give credit for two yards. It's so Vance Cooper, his first carry of the game. Second down and eight. Straight ahead for the Panthers. The uh, Cougars shift on defense, and they'll move their pass rush specialist. And that's Cutter Pepper out to the edge. Now, Sholo gets help on this near edge from one of those defensive backs. That is going to be Jeremy Kishbaugh stepping up and meeting Vance Cooper, the running back, and in fact, forcing a loss on the play. That's actually a three-yard loss. Great job. You see the contact there, and here comes help on that defense in the form of Jeremy Kishbaugh. So minus three on that carry for, for Vance Cooper. He is a senior running back, 5'10", 185 on the roster. And he'll line up just to the right of the quarterback, Gage Baker. Double slot formation. And a, a marker down here on third down and 11. 
The Panthers are going to be guilty of an illegal procedure call. That'll move it back five, make it third down at 16 as I bring in my broadcast partner, B-squared Byron Brown, joining me here tonight at Show Low Fort Stadium. Byron, welcome. Welcome to the 3A state quarterfinals. Hey, thank you very much. Exciting first quarter right here, first series of this game. Paradise Honors moving the ball. Over the middle, and the pass is caught deep downfield. That'll be a huge gain for the Panthers. They're going to take that deep into Sholo territory. We'll check the numbers for you on the distance here, but this one is going to put them in prime position to strike first in this one today. And that was a completed pass over the middle. The guy on the receiving end, Hank Stabler, hauls it in. And that looks to set the team up at the 15-yard line. Huge gain on the play. 37-yard pass play. Now toward the back of the end zone. That is caught, but out of bounds. Incomplete on the pass attempt. Gage Baker looking to the back of that end zone. And uh, now actually perhaps the ball was off the hands of the receiver. Incomplete to bring up second down from the 15-yard line of Sholo. Yeah, to go back to that play, big play by Paradise Honors. Right there, you don't see it. That's the first that I've ever seen, which is a wide receiver get past Ryan Kishpaw uh, as the defender right there, as a DB, and he ran right by him, had a step on Kishpaw. Quarterback laid it right into the arms. Big play for Paradise Honors. The number five ranked Paradise Honors Panthers. And threatening to get the game's first points, he'll deliver a pass completed left side. That is a pass caught and then out of bounds. That'll be a first down. And then the receiver took a little spill out there on the on the track, but he bounced back up. Now he's going to limp his way back to the field, and it didn't look good when he fell. We'll see if we have it at the end of the play here. Watch this. The receiver, Garrison, asked, looked like we didn't have the finish to the play, but he stumbled. He's still out there on the field, but he was smarting a little bit and they're going to give it up the middle Cooper tries to sidestep and Cholo says not going to happen that had been an 11 yard gain on that previous pass play and, and another first down so on first and goal they try Cooper again and Cholo's run defense has been just stout so far in this opening sequence this opening possession for the Panthers and they actually I believe lost two yards on that play yeah, nice job by the defense right there. 74 of the Cougar defense. Of the gang green coming through, making the big stop for the Cougars. Can I ask you about that? Gang green? Is that what they is that what you're calling them? That's Here, what I'm calling them. That's a good, that's a good one. Here's a pass toward the end zone. That is going to be incomplete. And it may have been dropped. Attempt toward, you know, toward that far corner. That's Josh Morales, who was the intended receiver. That pass incomplete. Just off the fingertips right there of Morales. He tried to keep his he was trying to keep his feet in bounds in the end zone while trying to make the catch. A, took his eye off the ball, went right through the fingers. During the next Gage Baker. Fakes it, throws left side. There's the defense. Broken tackle, another broken tackle. Ast stays on his feet, hit hard at the pylon, and there's going to come a flag out where the tackle is made. That might be a targeting, and the receiver, that's Garrison Ast, is he's on the ground. Look at him break a couple of tackles there. And then that shot, which looks pretty clean to me, is what I think brought the flag out, Byron. Yeah, that was uh, number 54 right there. Ingle, I believe, was the big hit, and that just knocked him loose. What a great effort by Paradise Honors right there, the wide receiver, breaking five tackles, and right there, that was just a clean shot. He hit him right in the shoulder pads, but that just uh, knocked, uh, you know, Paradise Honors guy. I want to say knocked him out, but it gave him a little bit of a... Uh, He's, a little, he's down right now, but that was a big hit by Ingle of the Cougars, but, but, but Paradise Honor still scored. Well, I'm waiting for the indication that confirms a touchdown. The official is giving the signal on the personal foul on the defender. And unless it was somebody else, I don't think Zane committed a foul of any kind. They end up marking the ball. And by the way, automatic first down now for 
So no no touchdown, automatic first down. Looked like he was in. I, he must have stepped out of bounds just before he it got really there. It really did look like he got the pylon, right. didn't he? It did. I, I, from this angle, or, or if we get, went back at that angle, it looks like he's the he's in the he's in the end zone, right? I mean, he escapes, and boom, right there, he looks to me like he's inside the pylon. Yeah. So they're gonna mark him at the three yard line. So that was a three yard gain just a moment ago. Look at this. They're calling it fourth down, Byron. Fourth down throw over the middle. That is broken up. Good defense, but a flag out. Ryan Kishbaugh was the defender that got there, and it looked like he got the hand across uh, clean, but Byron, maybe the hand on the back. Now, that was a good call right there. That was pass interference. Ryan yeah, Kishbaugh yeah. has Wrapped. his arm around the waist, and when you have that and you make a movement and you move the receiver, that's automatic pass interference. Now, you said, like, they, they made personal foul call against Sholo on that hit by Zach Engel, and then they called it fourth down. I thought personal foul automatically meant first down. Yeah, I, I, I you know, without communication <laughs> with the referee, I'm not sure anything that happened in that entire sequence. The ball remains at the three-yard line. I believe it's at the three. No, no, it's at the one now. And it's fourth down. It's got to be first. Set, well, the, the down marker says fourth. I know, but so, that was a pass interference. Well, pass interference doesn't, doesn't, I don't think you get an automatic first down. Baker, Baker pumps, throws toward that side. Passes caught. And it looks like inbounds for a touchdown. The Panthers are going to jump on the board first on a completed pass to Coleman Burkhart, a junior receiver. And he gets the six. Paradise Honors leads here in the quarterfinals. Yeah, nice little route right there to the corner. He beat his man right there. The, the Paradise Colt Burkhart, I believe that was the gentleman's name. Yeah, Col Coleman Burkhart right there. Beat, beat the DB to the corner route, and the quarterback delivered. Paradise Honors will line it up and go for two. I think their kicker said, I don't want to kick a rock. Here's a throw. That side, step across, two-point conversion completed. And Paradise Honors comes out, opens up, and does a terrific job to send an early message in this one. They came to play. Want to give a legal ID on our broadcast partner in the White Mountains, Mix 98 KRFM Sholo. That's the home of Sports Zone Radio. And we'll grab a timeout, everybody, a word in from our very good friends at Beeman Well Drilling. We're back with the kickoff here. It's 8 to nothing. Paradise Honors leading early over the Sholo Cougars. Sports on Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Toyota. The team at Beeman Well Drilling is like a great football team. They work hard, they work as a team, and they play to win. Their reputation is second to none, and they proudly call the White Mountains their home, even though they complete projects throughout the entire southwestern United States and beyond. No project is too big or too small for beam and well drilling, so when the time comes for you to punch a hole in the ground, remember the White Mountains' top well drilling team, beam and well drilling. Call anytime, 928-205-7647. Go deep with beam and well drilling. Back in, everybody, at Cholo High School. Welcome back to our broadcast coverage of the Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Toyota. Floyd Simmons, our broadcast partner, B Squared, Byron Brown, and our statistician tonight, the lovely Sonia Simmons, getting those numbers tabulated for us. Here comes a kick, angular kick, and that is going to skip into the end zone for a touchback. Cholo will get their first chance on offense with the 3A Northeast Region's Player of the Year, their quarterback, Nash Brewer. He's going to bring his offense out and get this thing rolling for the Cougars. Uh, Byron Na Nash received that honor as the player of the year in the 3A North Northeast region. He threw for about, I believe it was 1,400 yards passing this year, 20 touchdowns, just three interceptions, and he rushed as well, I think, for 1,300 yards and scored, I believe, 13 touchdowns, just some Great numbers for that young man. Well, not only do you have the player of the year as your quarterback, but you have the offensive player of the year at the running back in Ryan Kishbaugh. Let's see what the Cougars can do here on their first series. And Brewer's going to go up under center, fakes it to Kishbaugh, steps, tries to deliver, and then what happened? Did he get sacked? No, I think it was Ball batted down. Batted. Okay. Well, I'm trying to follow some action here. I'm looking different directions, and yeah, there's a big paw that comes out and knocks it down, and the guy that got it was uh, Caden Wasden. 
Caden's just a sophomore, 6'3", 190, and he got a big hand up there and thwarted the effort by Nash Brewer. So incomplete pass on first down. Now they'll give and try the left side, and the ball carrier is Nash Brewer, actually. Brewer tried to come out on this near side, and the, the Panthers were up to the challenge. Two-yard gain for Nash. There's a big situation for the Sholo Cougars. They just got hit in the mouth on the first offensive series from the Panthers. And here it's a third and long situation, something they're not akin to during the season. Yeah, I wonder if we went back and looked at the number of times that Sholo had a third and greater than, let's say, five. I just don't think it happens very often. Right here it's third down and eight. Brewer with two receivers out to the right. He's going to throw from the pocket. Flushed, pressure, and he is hit from behind on the release. Pass caught, far side. That'll be first down yardage for the Cougars. Colton Tidwell has turned into their go-to guy in the passing game, and he found himself wide open, short in that zone, and it's a beautiful job by Nash to get it to him. A nice job right there by your player of the year, Nash Brewer for the 3A Northeast Division. Felt the pressure from his blind side, ran to his left. Defender came up. He was caught in between. The defender was Nash Brewer as he's being tackled, able to flick it forward to Tidwell for the first down. 21 yards to gain on the play now. Sholo sets up at the 43-yard line. Movement up front. Paradise Honors is celebrating, but they're going to get called for offside. So that's going to go five yards against the defense. And it might be that somebody up front was guilty of drawing the offensive lineman because Paradise Honors was, that Panther defense was celebrating as if, as if uh, somebody on the offensive line moved. This Gage Reed head splitting out wide to the left for the Cougars. Motion, jet sweep, and after stumbling, Ryan Kishbaugh gathers himself back up. And he is able to take the ball straight ahead for a six-yard gain and a Cougar first down. Yeah, got a little help. Nice shot by Kishbaugh. Just cut in the corner. Doesn't go all the way wide. Cut it inside. Got to the first down marker. And then got a little help from the enemy right there. The Panther defense guy came up from behind. Hit him forward. He got the first down. So he got the... Uh, Unfriendly push that turned out all right for him, didn't it? Play action, roll out, dump it, pass caught. That's Ryan Kishbaugh, speed on the outside. Kishbaugh cuts back, breaks through the defense, and nobody's going to catch him now. That's a 45-yard Sholo touchdown. Hey, what a great run by Ryan Kishbaugh. We talked about him being the offensive player of the year. You know who was supposed to cover him? Number 42 of the Panthers. You know what happened to him? He's tired. He was down after the play, after the touchdown. He's bent over on the sidelines. He couldn't keep up with the fastest guy in the White Mountains. Might very well be the fastest football player in 3A football in the state. And with 7.19 on the clock, the Cougars have gotten on the board. And they're going to get movement up front. And I believe Cholo's going to get a half the distance mark off right here as the defense came across. And they're going to talk to Sholo. Ask him what they want to do about it. Floyd, that number 42, that's Hake Stabler. 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 Oh, Kenny Stabler. Hank Stabler. You can't put a linebacker on Ryan Kishpa. And that's exactly what happened. He couldn't keep up. And as a matter of fact, he got too tired to keep it up. Shillow will line up, go for two, and give it to Jed Walker, the freshman. And he's going to follow. The lead block of Ray Pedraza into the end zone to put the points on the board. And the Cougars have matched it. The two-point conversion makes it. Sholo 8, Paradise Honors 8. The kick coming up in a moment. The Sports on Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Toyota. 
The holidays are here, and you could probably use some extra cash. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint is giving away $500 cash. Not once, not twice, but every week now through Christmas. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint is known for having great incentives like dinners and movies, full service car washes, or $100 in window tint. But did you know all of our technicians are certified by the National Auto Glass Safety Council? Why? Because Auto Glass is a major factor in your vehicle's collision support. And and because your family's safety is our number one priority. And whether you've been naughty or nice, you'll get a chance to win $500 cash given away each week now through Christmas. Call Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent today. For those of you watching our video stream coverage at the Sports on Radio Facebook page or on the Sports on Radio YouTube channel, saw that return right there. And the tackle by Cutter Pepper of Sholo on special teams. And the ball comes out to the 37 yard line. Decent field position for the Panthers, who moved the ball on an 11 play scoring drive on their first possession today to get the ball into the end zone on a short touchdown pass from Gage Baker to Coleman Burkhart. That made it 8 to nothing. Sholo answered, covering 80 yards in just five plays. And a 45-yard touchdown pass, the big play. That's Nash Brewer to Ryan Kishbaugh. And here now with right at seven minutes remaining in the first quarter, Paradise Honors gets their second opportunity with the football. They just gained two yards on first down to bring up second down and eight. Well, let's see what the Cougar defense can do because they just got hit in the mouth that first series. Something that hasn't happened, I don't think, all season long. Under pressure, and the ball thrown out of bounds by Baker. At the right in front of the Panthers' bench. And that's something that Sholo is very adept at doing. They know how to get pressure on the quarterback, and they love to bring that pressure. They are a high-risk, reward-type defense. Look at the young man, number 73, on the near edge. That is the 3A Northeast Region's Defensive Player of the Year. Watch him and watch his motor go. That's Gage, uh, Gabe Benali. Uh, Gabe, a senior, is only 5'5", 160. And here he comes to pressure the quarterback. Release left side, pass caught. That's asked on the receiving end. And that'll be yardage for the first down. Well, no, they say he stepped out just shy. Look at this. Oh, he stepped right there. Yeah, and just uh, short. Yeah, seen by the official. Well, he turned up and he didn't realize where he was. So the gain on that play was uh, seven yards. It's fourth down and a yard, and Paradise Honors, short of midfield, is going for it. Yep, it's for real. Throw left side, throw way over the head of the receiver. Well, Byron, they weren't on the same page, the receiver. And out there on that left side was Garrison asked. He, he thought it was, he thought the route was to cut it off. Baker read an opportunity to go down the sideline. So he launched it. Obviously, miscommunication, incomplete pass, and the ball goes over on downs to the Cougars. Well, that's uh, two in a row for asked. Right there of the Paradise Honors Panthers on that first comeback route where he was able to catch it, but he stepped out of bounds before the first down. He had plenty of room to get it. And then right there, miscommunication with his quarterback. He went a little out route, and the quarterback went down the sideline with it. Now, Cougars in great field position. Handoff left side. That's Carson Cooper with his first carry today. For Sholo and Carson will take it on a 15-yard little jaunt to the 32-yard line. And Move the chains for the Cougars. Well, here comes that offensive line right there for the Sholo Cougars opening up the holes for this running attack that the Sholo Cougars have had all season long. I'm going to mark it back to the 33-yard line and bring up first down for Sholo in the backfield with Nash Brewer, who will go up under center, is Ray Pedraza. And Ryan Kishbaugh, they're going to give it to Pedraza on the dive, straight up the middle. The fullback is going to battle his way to a six-yard gain. Mark him down at the 26-yard line. Looks like the enthusiasm 
that Paradise Honor started off the game with has now come to a little bit of a realization of, wow, Sholo is good. Sholo is certainly worthy of the ranking. Has them in the game here with a number five ranking. Nash Brewer from the shotgun, battling his way, trying to get to the line to gain, which is around the 33. He is knocked down at the 36 yard line. And for Brewer on the play, we're gonna give him credit for well, a single yard. I believe that he's shy by about three. Third down and three, straight ahead for the Sholo offense. Good job by the Panther defense playing with clean eyes, watching the play, not getting fooled. Third down play, handed off right side. Jet Walker, there's your guy to get it for you, and he's going to do just that. Walker for a four-yard gain and move the chains again. Sholo picks up that first down. And uh, Byron, there's your specialist right there. If you need, you need the big yardage, go ahead and give it to your freshman, Jet Walker. Yeah, give it to Jet Walker, but give credit to number 52. He was pulling on the play, and he was able to block Number 21 of the defense blocked him outside. Walker gets inside, gets the first down. And that's Armani Flores doing that, throwing that block. And here's a tough, spirited run for nine yards this time. That's a big gain for Ryan Keshbaugh around that right side. And here's what Sholo does best right here is just give the ball to one of the running backs, one of the best there is in the Northeast region. Offensive player of the year, Ryan Keshbaugh, picking up big yardage. So second down and one. If I'm Sholo, I'm taking a shot at the end zone right here. Let's see what Brewer does under center. Gage, watch Gage Reedhead. He is split out to the left. Fake it. Going to look that direction. Nope, throw over the middle. It's off the hands of Sergio Vialba. Well, that's that little um, you know, kind of mid-range crossing route that Vialba is really adept at running, but they could not complete the pass. A little bit too high for Sergio. A little too high, but... As they say, if you can touch it with both hands, you got to come down with it. And right there, Sergio unable to get it down into his mitts. Nash Brewer, two out, of, two out of four right now for 66 yards and a touchdown. He'll give it. And Ryan Kishbaugh gets hit right in the middle. That was a fantastic defensive play. The big stop right in the middle. Stabler. Give credit to Hank Stabler. Stabler is the guy I talked to the coaching staff for Paradise Honors before the game, and they called him out. And, Mentioned that, you know, keep your eye on, on this inside linebacker we got. He's, he's pretty special. Well, he's making plays here on defense. Right there, coming through the middle. And putting the stop on Kishbaugh. So it's fourth down. Fourth down and a couple to go for Sholo. And they're going for it all the way. They're not going to bother kicking. Brewer in the shotgun. He's got receivers split out left and right. Here comes the blitz right up the middle. Hand off to Kishbaugh. Trying to pick his way through, and he's going to do just that. He just went down that line until he could finally find a little seam to dart through, and he did. He found the hole, and he, he turned it up north-south when he sees it right there and gains four yards for the first down. Yeah, great job by the big guys up front. 76, 34 right there. Putting the block on, letting Kishbaugh just go down the line of scrimmage. And then getting through there and getting the first down. I'm going to have to scold Byron on the usage of numbers. He knows better. Well, you we, got to give me a program. We got rosters right here. <laughs> you got to give go, me a roster. Let's go with that. Fourth, uh, first down play. Here comes the give between those two tackles. And right up the middle goes, is that Pedraza? And it is. Ray Pedraza finds his way inside the five-yard line. And... Well, I didn't actually see where the original line of scrimmage was, so that's going to it's going to bring up second down now. Second down. I think it was about the nine nine yard line. Okay, ball is at the three yard line, so a six yard gain on that previous play for Pedraza. Second down and goal. Movement way up front. The illegal procedure on the offense. They'll move it back five yards. All that does is just give them a little more space to work with. Well, all that does is just add five more yards. So that's eight more yards to the total line of scrimmage, uh, total yards that they're going to get tonight. Yeah, I got a score for you from Wilcox, everybody. Wilcox hosting the mighty, mighty Roadrunners in the two-way state quarterfinals. And 
after returning the opening kickoff for a 70-yard touchdown. Now at the end of the first quarter, Wilcox has a big lead. Handoff right side, and there's Ryan Kishbaugh. He is going to find his way to the end zone for the Sholo Cougars. An eight-yard Cougar touchdown. How about Ryan Kishbaugh right there going to the outside, seeing four white jerseys coming with him, and he sticks the right foot into the ground and cuts back against the four white shirts and goes right through them for Sholo's second touchdown of the night. Movement up front again. I think Sholo drew, I think they drew Paradise Honors off. They'll get the half to distance mark off on the offside. Ball will go to the one and a half yard line and here comes the offense back on the field or are they gonna, are they gonna kick the ball? Well, yeah, they're gonna go for it. Off comes the Sholo kicker. Uh, that's Calvin Morgan. He leaves the field. Ray Pedraza checks back in. And the swinging gate formation for Sholo from the shotgun, Nash Brewer. Snap it. Option. Brewer will duck back inside. And he is able to break the, break the line, break the plane. Into the end zone for the score. Sholo gets it a second time. They get their second touchdown. And a two-point conversion makes this now 16 to eight. Sholo in front with 143 on the clock in the first quarter. The Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Toyota. No matter the occasion, large, small, or just because, the Bloomhouse Floral Designs located in Pine Top will create the perfect bouquet to capture your moment perfectly. Offering the widest selection of beautiful and unique floral designs and accents, the Bloomhouse serves as your personal creation expert. We are open to serve you Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 and Saturday from 10 till 4. Same day and rush deliveries are available. Stop by or order online at bloomhouseflorals.com. A minute 43 on the clock in the first quarter. Back here to Sholo High School, everybody. Floyd Simmons along with B-squared Byron Brown. The Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week is presented by Hatch Toyota. Well, Sholo got a short field. They only had to cover 47 yards. They did so in nine plays. It took four minutes and 51 seconds of clock to do it. The touchdown, a Ryan Kish by eight yard. Or rather, yeah, eight yard touchdown run. Two point conversion. And now our score is 16 to eight, Sholo in front. And here comes Paradise Honors to go to work at about their own 22 yard line. Well, let me finish with that update from Wilcox, okay? Wilcox hosting Holbrook in the two-way state quarterfinals. Wilcox, at the end of the first quarter, had a 28 to nothing lead over Holbrook. 28 to nothing. I said that. Yeah. Go Big Red. Yeah. Yeah, that. <laughs> Baker takes the snap, rolls to the left, dumps a pass. That one caught. Is that Stabler? I believe that it is. is. Stabler on the receiving end, and he picks yardage up to the 29-yard line. That should be a gain of seven yards. Well, after taking that shot to the mouth, the Cougar defense was able to stand up and create a turnover on downs. Last defensive series, and then the offense has got their Two tries and getting two scores for the 16-8 lead. Three receivers split out left. They're handing off. Here comes the run this direction. And a great defensive play by Nash Brewer. He steps up. This makes him so valuable. He's not just a great quarterback, but a spectacular defensive player. Vance Cooper trying to run out here to the near side. And, and the leading ball carrier for this team, this Paradise Honors team, just can't find, seem to find uh, any opportunities. He lost three yards. Well, someone forgot to get Vance Cooper the memo that you're not going to beat Sholo to the outside. You're not fast enough. Sholo's faster than you. Stick it up the middle if you can. Five carries minus four yards for Cooper. Here comes Baker. What looks like a design quarterback drop. We'll give him credit for a no gain, and I think that's generous. Let's say he got back to the line of scrimmage, but once again, that... That run defense for the Cougars, they are so stout and so hard to run against. There's St. Angle, and they're on the tackle, Cutter Pepper, and 
right there in the middle of the whole thing uh, was Easton Pena to help make that stop, bring up fourth down and six. And timeout for the quarter break. Time does expire here as so we get down to the, the end of it. And after one quarter, 16 to eight, Cholo has the early lead here tonight. And we'll be back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere, we will. We'll bring you that second quarter here in just a moment. Stand by, everybody. The Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week is presented by Hatch Toyota. We're back with more playoff football right after this. Hi, this is Chaz Hatch. I won't lose a deal over a dollar, and you have my word on it. Chaz has been saying that since 2009. The Hatch Toyota team price checks against other dealers to make sure we're offering the best value. But if you come in with a bona fide offer that's lower than what we have on the window, we'll honor it. Our product specialists will show you around, help you with a test drive, and work with you to find the perfect vehicle that fits your lifestyle and budget. They aren't on commission, so they aren't under pressure to sell. With the largest inventory in the White Mountains, Hatch Toyota carries all makes and models of cars, minivans, crossovers, trucks, and sport utilities from all the major manufacturers. Come see us today. Hatch Toyota at the Northern Arizona Auto Mall and at HatchToyota.com. Keeping the White Mountains rolling for 32 years. Hi, this is Chaz Hatch. Get our statewide low price guarantee on every new Toyota. Find out more at HatchToyota.com or visit us today at the Northern Arizona Auto Mall in Sholo. Offers on approved credit. See dealer for details. And we're back into it, everybody. Welcome back to our broadcast coverage of the Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Toyota. The second quarter gets underway. Sholo taking on Paradise Honors in this quarterfinal 3A state playoff game. Floyd Simmons, B squared, Byron Brown, and a very short punt by Paradise Honors to start the quarter. And it burned the first nine seconds off. Cholo gets great field position there. Sitting at their own 44-yard line to begin this one. Up the middle it goes. And the Panthers defense is there to make the stop. Carrying the ball, Ray Pedraza. Three yards of the pick up on the play. Second down and seven, straight ahead. If you're the Cholo Cougars offense, you've been successful running the ball. Continue to do it. You've got the horses. You've got Pedraza. You've got Brewer. You have Kishbaugh. And you got Walker. You got the four guys in the backfield that you can give the ball to and just wear down this defense. And they'll try it again. Kishball left side and Ryan following his blockers up front is able to slice through that defense for a, it's like a gain of four on that play. Third down and three for Shola. Very nice honors on that last series, Floyd. I thought I had a very precarious uh, call on third down where they tried the quarterback draw. You've been successful throwing the ball, and yet on third and long, you decided to try to run it with your quarterback. Third down and three. Sholo, by the way, back into Panther territory. They'll try the right side. Got a nice push after the initial contact, and... I believe they got the first down. They needed three yards. And they got the three and moved the chains. First down, Sholo. Coming up at halftime, as you take a great look at the Sholo crowd. At halftime, it's the Mountain Mobile Autoglass halftime report. Where we break it down, look at the first half stats, and do all that good stuff for you here. On our broadcast ball at the 45 of the Panthers. Back to throw down the left sideline. That one dangerously thrown down that sideline. Looking for Ryan Kishbaugh. But a good defensive play by Mikey Young. Mikey Young, the defender, was there. And he's actually the guy that had the best chance of catching that ball. And it's almost like Kishbaugh had to turn into a defender for a second. Yeah, Brewer just never saw the defender right there as he... Saw Kishbaugh run in the sideline route open. Didn't see the safety over the top right there. And safety knocked it away. Approaching now 10 minutes remaining here in the first half. Toss sweep right side. That's Kishbaugh trying to cut back. And just one 
fingertip got him. Uh, that was Caden Wasden getting credit for the tackle. He was able to kind of sprawl out there, get a hand, and just get a piece of Kishpa's foot to bring him down. It ends up being a no gain on the play, and we do have, by the way, an injured player on the field. One of those Panthers is down right now. Well, they tend to the player, and we hope he is okay. Let's take a look at how the two teams got here to the second round of the playoffs. Sholo, the four seed, took down Blue Ridge. Last week right here at Sholo High School. Final score is 56 to seven, Sholo over Blue Ridge. Paradise Honors hosted Payson last week and defeated the Longhorns. Final score was 26 to 24. The injured player who is now up on, on his feet and walking off the field is Noah Locke. Noah Locke. And Paradise Honors will play on without that young man for a moment, but he looked like he was going to be okay uh, walking off mostly under his own power. We've got 9.55 on the clock here in the second quarter. Our score, Sholo 16, Paradise Honors 8, 3A State quarterfinals. Nash Brewer takes the snap and a little half roll to the right. Floating pocket pass is going to be broken up, intended for Ryan Kishbaugh. Boy, there were four defenders in that immediate area. Trailing the play was Colton Tidwell, but Byron, I mean, that was all clogged up. That was going to be a tough pass to sneak in there, and it does go incomplete. Yeah, Stabler right there for the Panther defense just about came away with the interception right there. Brewer trying to force the issue, and Stabler able to come from behind and make the play. You said his coach is very high on Stabler, and right now you're seeing why. Incomplete pass stops the clock at 9.36 of the second quarter. 16 to 8, the lead for the Cougars. Brewer to throw again. He'll bounce out to the left side, and it opens wide open on that side. Down that left sideline, and a big hit at the finish of it. Nash, unafraid of the contact, finishes strong and a big first down for the Sholo Cougars. Look, if you're going to have a rush against the Sholo Cougars, you have to have outside containment. You cannot allow Nash Brewer to get to the outside. He's, he's, he's the second fastest guy in the White Mountains right there, and he just showed you why. And not only is he the fastest guy, but he's one of the toughest guys. He doesn't shy away from contact. As you said, Floyd, he wants to be the hammer, not the nail. 26 yards, the gain on the play. Now a handoff, Kishbaugh spinning out of a tackle. Look, as the season has gotten on, Kishbaugh has gotten tougher and tougher to bring down. Remember when, because he's not that big of a guy, remember when you could bring him down on first contact, Byron? It's just not that way anymore for Ryan Kishbaugh, and he gains six yards on that play. Yeah, he's a very shifty runner. He doesn't just rely on his speed. He has cuts. He has that, uh, what is it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to date myself with the Nintendo going X, O, X, and then A, right? <laughs> Second down and four. And Brewer is going to run the option. He'll keep it, turn it up. And I think that he is close to the first down, just shy. In fact, shy by actually a, a couple of yards on the play. So a gain of two on that one for, for Nash. And here comes the 10th the play of this drive for the Cougars. That began at the Sholo 44-yard line. Joe with another impressive drive right now. Really trying to able to put this game maybe a little bit out of the reach here, or at least with it in two possessions. Handoff right side. That's Kishbaugh. And Kishbaugh, well, he's, he's got the first down. That's the first order of business. And it looks like he's going to get it to the six. So a five-yard pickup on that play. Tough, grueling yardage right through the middle. And a first down. Well, we're going to use that uh, high Tucson math right there. You saw Kishbaugh bounce off not just one, two, but six white jersey, six tackles right there. Get the first down. Very suspect math indeed. Handoff up the middle. Kishbaugh this time wrapped up right in the middle. That was a terrific job to get there. I've got that as Jeff Bates right up the middle. That was the first guy on the scene, that number 50 right there, big fella. 
And you see his, what is he wearing, a, a pullover underneath that? Look at the sweatshirt. I mean, it's cold, okay? It's, I don't know what it is. Is it 30 degrees or right about that right now? It's cold. It's below freezing, let's put it that way. Here at Cholo High School. That was a very short gain, by the way. Let's see what this one ends up. Brewer overthrows his receiver, Tidwell, at the back of the end zone. That one goes, goes incomplete. Brewer step back to pass. Really not having a Brewer-type passing night so far. Feeling a little pressure and, and just not really getting down right there. He, he threw off his back foot, which when you throw off your back foot, the ball is going to sail on you, and right there it sailed wide. But good for him because the defender was there if it was right on. The Cougars are looking at third down and goal now from the 7-yard line. Can the Panthers do... Well, accomplish that very difficult task of holding off the, the Cougars. We'll find out. Third down play, throw over the middle, and that one is incomplete to, to Gage Reedhead, who may not have seen the ball because he got the arms up late, and it looked like a catchable ball, but that does go incomplete. Yeah, that's a, that's a slant or a post route right there, and uh, Reedhead just not really watching for it. Brewer put a little mustard on that ball but still right there for the receiver to catch so the place kicking team is out and Cholo is going to try a field goal 22 yard variety the ball has popped up in the air hey it didn't clear it by a lot but it cleared it by enough <laughs> dropped into the bread basket over there at the top you'll take another look at the kick and oh, I mean, he just popped it up that looked like Byron Brown's driver absolutely it went just as far as my driver, too. Calvin Morgan nails the 22-yard field goal. The kick is good. The Shola Cougars lead this game down 19-8 over Paradise Honors. I'll say this. We'll stay right here through our break. I'll say this, Byron. I'm impressed with Paradise Honors. I know the Shola's taking the ball down the field, but look, that's... Business as usual for the Cougars on offense, but Paradise Honors is showing promise as a team that can get some stuff done. They're playing with a lot of juniors, some sophomores. This is a young team, and their coaching staff is excited about what they're going to be able to do next year. Yeah, they got their quarterback, Gage Baker, coming back. I think he threw for 1,900 yards last year as a sophomore. He leads all quarterbacks in the state of Arizona in passing this year, Byron, and he comes back next year. So they're excited about a young team. Already in this one, they're showing some things, showing some promise, but it's going to be tough for them to keep pace with the Cougars. After that uh, field goal, here's the return and decent field position on this return for Paradise Honors. Well, they are a young team, and, and you can see the promise, and they've done well offensively. They really, that last, that last offensive series is really where you didn't see a lot going on for the Panthers and and really the, the series before that where they turned it over on downs it was fourth and one just a miscommunication through the receiver and the quarterback but they have done a nice job here up here against this defense the vaunted Sholo Cougar defense the Panthers now working from their own 39 yard line Baker the quarterback Decides to bounce out the right side, throws downfield, got a man behind the defense. This one is going to the house. And the Panthers strike quickly on this possession. They'll go 61 yards on the touchdown pass. The receiver, Josh Morales. Right there, that's just the route that comes across the field and, and everybody's looking at the quarterback and that's Kishpaugh that's in front that tries to dive, put a paw on it, doesn't get any part of the ball. Once you do that, if the receiver catches it, he's gone, and that's a touchdown for the Panthers. Point after try is on the way. The kick is up, and the kick is it's good. Mark Johnson, the kicker, delivers the point after, and our score is now 19-15. Paradise, Paradise Honors making this a great game in the first half on that long 61-yard touchdown pass to Morales. Stand by. The Sports on Radio Game of the Week is presented by Hatch Toyota. Let's get a word in from White Mountain Regional Medical Center. They are the presenting sponsors of the Sports 
Zone Player of the Game, which we'll announce at the end of this 3A State quarterfinal. Back in just a moment, everybody. Imagine this, a professional healthcare partner that's concerned about you, your choices, your health, your safety. At White Mountain Regional Medical Center in Springerville, choice and elevating your healthcare experience is the mission of our new CEO, experienced physicians and friendly staff. Whether you need a rapid COVID-19 test, a vaccination, or you're looking to utilize the newest MRI, CT scan, or nuclear medicine technology, White Mountain Regional Medical Center, located in Springerville, is your healthcare partner when choices matter. And White Mountain Regional Medical Center will present the Sports on Radio's player of the game at the conclusion of our broadcast today. Welcome back to Sholo Fork Stadium. Floyd Simmons, B squared, Byron Brown on the play-by-play call of the Sports on Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Toyota. 1916, Sholo in front. But Paradise Honors putting on display. Their calling card as a team, they, they like to throw the football, they can throw it well, and they have shown that here in the first half against the Cougars. A kick that sails out of bounds, that'll be a procedure penalty, and in all likelihood, is going to take the ball at the 35-yard line to begin a new possession on top by four. You know, one of, uh, it, it was a tough, tough play for the Sholo Cougars, and, uh, but you know what, what made that play so good? Is it is it made Floyd Simmons right once? You know, made him sound like he knew what he was doing. He's talking highly about the Paradise Honors, how young they are and what they're doing, and, and the coaches are all excited for this offense at Gage Baker. And guess what? They prove him right by just going out and throwing first pass touchdown. Obviously a very unusual happenstance here is a Wildcat set, throw deep down the sideline to Nash Brewer. That is going to be broken up by the defender. Ray Pedraza took the snap. Brewer split out from his quarterback spot. And was that Mikey Young, I believe? It was Mikey back there defensively. Wasn't fooled. And he broke it up incomplete for the Cougars. Well, Nash Brewer had to become, he had to go back to his defensive side of the ball right there. He had to play defense and knock that ball out of the hands of the defender or else that was going to be an interception and a turnover for the Cougars. Sholo has points on every possession so far. Three possessions, 19 points in total, and they'll hand it off for a four-yard gain to Ryan Kishbaugh. No, it's Pedraza. Pardon me on that. Ryan the carry. Ray the carry. How about this? Let's call him Chicken, right? He likes to be called Chicken. That's his nickname. Let's see if we can remember that. And they actually gave him a very favorable spot. So we revise it to a five-yard gain. Ball at the 40-yard line for Sholo. Third down play, there's an offside. Yep, stepped across, faked the blitz, stepped across the foot, went into the neutral zone. And that'll be a first down for Sholo. Clock was running, which by the way, I think hurts Sholo more than it does Paradise (laughs) Honors right now. So there's your call, offside on the defense. That should be enough for the first down because I think the Nose of the ball was over the line just a hair. Well, now they <laughs> they marked it off 4.8 yards. Shorter steps. Well, that's Shorter they, steps. That's what they did. So it's not a first down. It's just shy of a first down. Third down and inches. Well, the Cougars offense, what do you call here, Byron? What I call? I call, I call a deep ball. You want to go deep on this? I, I go deep because I know I am very confident if I don't get the deep ball, on fourth and inches, I'm getting it. Yeah, but you know what we haven't seen yet? We haven't seen the Nash Brewer quarterback sneak. We haven't seen his, his it, it would be from this spot, a 55-yard touchdown run from on the sneak. We'll see if he does. He's going to sneak uh, all, all day long. Yeah, there he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Nash Brewer. There he goes. Right side. You can't stop the sneak. Touchdown, <laughs> Cholo. Look at that. Wow. The Shola Cougars have made a living on Nash Brewer's quarterback sneak. Nobody, I've never seen a high school team run the sneak like Sholo does. He just kind of felt his way down that line, fire until he 
he sensed the opening, took it up the field. You saw him bust through a tackle or two, and then the speed for the touchdown. Well, we see a harvest moon rising over here in the northeast end zone. And it's a full moon. And you know what? When there's a full moon, there's craziness. And how about Floyd Simmons being right twice? He called for a sneak. They give him a sneak, and it scores for a touchdown. This is one of those wild and crazy nights of the full moon. Who would have believed it? <laughs> that Floyd Simmons could get two things right in a broadcast. But I'm just saying, Nash Brewer and the quarterback sneak, that's, that's the not-so-secret weapon that the Sholo Cougars have these days. You look at film, you've seen it before on film, you see a great look at Nash with the steam coming off his head at 30 degrees right here in Cholo. Right now, hey, look it up. Ask, ask Cody over there to look up what the current temperature is. He knows how to work his mobile device, doesn't he? Yeah, find out from Cody what the, what the current temperature is here in Cholo. I think it's right about 30 degrees. But that quarterback sneak, you've got to figure out a way to stop it if you're a defensive team. And so far, and Shola runs it when they do run it. It's they got a high degree of probability of, of, of not just success, but I mean turning into a big, big play. 55 yards, the touchdown. You know, we don't have the crack staff of the big guys, you know, that, that call games on Sunday. But if we did, I guarantee you they would be able to come up with the average yardage on the Nash Brewer sneak quarterback sneak because I guarantee you it's 40 40 plus yards every attempt somebody give us the give us the uh, the data on that here comes Gage Baker trying to bust out of that pocket chased out for a short gain on the far sideline after after the ball taken over, you see Easton Pena giving chase and driving the quarterback out of bounds. Actually ends up being a no gain on the play. Well, that was a big explosive play for the Sholo Cougars. Brought a little momentum here to the crowd and to the, to, the, to the team right there. Big call, big run by your player of the year, Nash Brewer. Empty backfield for Baker. He is looking at the crossing route. He delivers, and a big hit is delivered on the receiver. There's a marker out on the contact. Was that Armani Flores who lowered the boom on that sideline? I'm not sure where this officiating crew is from, but as we watch the finish right here, it's going to be Kishbaugh that hits him and knocks him out of bounds. I'm not sure what the call is, Byron. We don't have communication with the official. But it certainly doesn't look like any sort of any sort of uh, unnecessary roughness. Well, the only thing I, I could see on that replay is he might have been out of bounds. He might have had a foot out of bounds, and they're going to call it once you're out of bounds. And, and just so you know, Floyd, 29 degrees is the local temp. 29. It's about what I... That's the third time I'm right, Byron. I think I said it was 29 a moment ago. You said 30, but that's okay. I'm going to give myself some credit on that. So that was actually a five-yard pass completion. And then the mark off the ball at the 44-yard line of Sholo. Paradise honors. Pressure coming. Contact on the quarterback. Pass delivered. Easton Pena makes the tackle. And it's actually a yard lost on the play. Jose Morales, who gets up slow after Pena's tackle. So minus one on that play. Second down and 11 coming up. Great coverage right there by Pena on the, on the crossing route. Just sticking with the man as soon as he caught the ball, he just clamped down and threw him down for a TFL. Tackle for loss. Hey, I want to say hello and a shout out to Seth Gaston, the, the head man in charge down at Hatch Toyota. He's uh, tuned in, listening in. He said, he said, you sound great and the game is exciting. And Byron, I think he was referring to you on that. And the sound great. Look at Baker escaping pressure and then driven out of bounds. Pena chasing him down. And that's going to once again be a very short gain. He avoided the sack by maybe picking up one, getting back to what was the original line of scrimmage. That'll bring a third down and 10 
for Paradise Honors at the Sholo 44-yard line. And that was just a big rush of gangrene from this defense of the Cougars. It looked like just a herd of Toyota Tundra trucks crashing down on the quarterback and forcing him into the sidelines. Byron Brown doing a great job at working it in. Good job, man. Third down play. Baker gives it on the draw. Boy, that's a great play. Broken tackles, and that turns into the, the best running play from scrimmage, a 16-yard gain for Vance Cooper. And he was bottled up to, at about seven yards past the line of scrimmage. You'll see it right here, and then somehow he's able to squirt through their escape. The sure tackle not there this time for Sholo. Pena gets himself another individual tackle at the end of the play, but 16 yards the game. Just as Floyd Wright twice is a rare sight, a rare sight right there seen of three black jerseys missing the tackle and allowing the runner Cooper to get a first down. Coleman Burkhardt on the receiving end of this Gage Baker pass, and it's good for nine yards, just shy of the first down. You see another look at it on the replay, Jeremy Kishpaugh finishing off with the tackle. And here comes the seventh play of this possession for Paradise Honors. And a whistle and a defensive timeout. Sholo and their defensive coordinator, Danny Hawkins, ask for timeout. Sholo leads 26-15 here in the first half. The Mountain Mobile Auto Glass halftime report comes up at the break. We'll break it down for you here on the Sports Zone Radio. Game of the week. It's presented by Hatch Toyota. And with the timeout taken, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Sports Zone Radio Network. This is Sports Zone Radio. Sports Zone Radio. Champions play here at Sports Zone Radio. Well, Sports Zone Nation, you're listening live and local all across the White Mountains on our radio home for our Sports Zone Radio coverage. That would be Mix 98 KRFM Sholo. So welcome back in. Thank you for joining us wherever you might be listening or if you're watching our live video stream, the Sports Zone Radio Facebook page or the Sports Zone Radio YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. And I want to say a hello as well. We know that a number of Paradise Honors fans back in the Valley are, are tuned in, listening, watching. Thank you for doing so. We appreciate you and we appreciate your your ball club, your football team, these great kids from Paradise Honors making the trip up to the White Mountains for this matchup. Two-yard gain for Cooper. And Vance Cooper is going to move the chains for Paradise Honors. First down inside the Sholo 20-yard line. How about this offense for the Panthers right here? Trying to answer the bell after that big run by Nash Brewer. Trying to get six of their own here on this drive. Three receivers out to the left, draw play. Cooper up the middle, sidesteps the tackle, and he is going to race for, I think, first down yardage. The line of scrimmage was the 17, and it looks like he is able to get boy, to the 7, just a shade inside of it. Call it a 10-yard gain on that play for Vance Cooper and another first down, first and goal this time for Paradise Honors. One of the things, if you can pass the ball successfully, as Paradise Honors has tonight, you're able to draw the defense to rush forward, and then you can do the draw up the middle to Cooper right here that has been successful on this series. Baker looking to throw. A lot of time. Back at the end zone. That pass is caught. And it's a touchdown for the Panthers on the receiving end. Josh Morales, that, I believe, his second touchdown catch of the day today on only three receptions overall. He's found the end zone twice. The Panthers are on the board again. Right there, the offensive line for the Panthers doing a great job. The gangrene could not get a rush. Allowed Baker to sit back in the pocket, go through his progressions, and then finally see his receiver come open in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. There's your touchdown. Enough to quiet the Sholo crowd for a bit. We'll get a time out here and await the decision by Paradise Honors. They're going to go for two. They're going to kick it. We've got three minutes, seven seconds remaining here in the first half. 
As we've said before, the Mountain Mobile Auto Glass halftime report is coming up at the break. There is a nice delivery right there by Gage Baker. I want to say hi to, to J.D. Pepper. He is the one of the coaches on the staff here from Sholo. And his son, Cutter Pepper, number 83 on this, on this ball club, he's going to go out there on that defense, try to stop Paradise Honors right now. J.D. Pepper says, I'm watching my boys from Oklahoma tonight. Sorry I could not be there tonight, boys. Love you all. Play hard. Play with all your hearts for four quarters. Coach Pep. Well, Coach, glad you found our broadcast. And Paradise Honors down five right now. We'll go for, go for two. They're going to line up trips right. Solo receiver on the left. Baker looking to the right, throwing toward the corner. And that pass goes incomplete. But Paradise Honors back on the board again. Stand by, everybody. We'll grab a quick timeout. 30-second break. Get a word in from our friends at Summit Healthcare. Don't go anywhere. This is the Sports on Radio Game of the Week. It's presented by Hatch Toyota. Summit Healthcare Orthopedics welcomes Curtis Ellsworth, DO. Dr. Ellsworth received his Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine from Midwestern University in Glendale, Arizona. He completed his orthopedic surgery residency at Research Medical Center in Kansas City, Missouri. Dr. Ellsworth is accepting new patients. Summit Healthcare Orthopedics, 4951 White Mountain Road in Sholo, 928-537-6700. Back in, everybody. And we are in the middle of a cat fight at Sholo High School tonight. The Sholo Cougars with a 26 to 21 lead over the Paradise Honors Panthers. Sholo the four seed in the 3A state tournament. The Panthers come in as the five seed and a, and a close one in the first half like you, like you might expect. But plenty of time on that clock for the high-powered High-octane Sholo offense. Here's a kick that goes out of bounds inside the 10. That'll be no return. Ball comes out to the 35-yard line for the Cougars. And their quarterback, Nash Brewer. Let's see what they can do here with three minutes and seven seconds remaining in the half. Well, I believe uh, four possessions. How many possessions has Sholo had? I believe it's been four, right? Sholo's, Sholo's had the ball a total of four times. Yes, yeah, so they scored all four. Every time. Three touchdowns, one field goal. They burned some clock in that time frame as well, and that's helped keep this game close for the Panthers. Brewer rolls out to the left. He dumps a pass. Pedraza hit quickly and knocked down a four-yard gain on the play for the Cougars. That's going to be a play that's going to set something up a little later on. Nice job by the Panther defense. One-on-one -on -one with Pedraza. Most of the time, Pedraza wins that battle, but right here, the Panther defense is able to come up big. Second down play, low snap. Brewer picks it up, looks downfield, has a man, Sergio Vialba, knocked out. At about the Panther 45-yard line. Nice delivery. 15 yards and a first down for the Cougars. Right there, Nash Brewer rolling to his right. Spots the open receiver. Sergio gets the ball right on, on schedule right there. Sergio with a big gain. First down play, Cougars. Snap it, give it, up the middle, Pedraza, he breaks a tackle, and he runs with a head of steam out to near the 30-yard line. There's a big game, there's another first down, 13 yards the game this time for the Cougar fullback. They had to find a place to put Pedraza on this offense, and they moved him around a little bit, but he has settled in as really a just a fullback type uh, Byron for this offense, and he delivers some tough bruising yards like that one right there. Yeah, and then when you see runs like those, you wonder how he got the nickname Chicken. Exactly. First down play. Throw it downfield. That is broken up. Incomplete. And uh, it was Gage Reed had the intended receiver. Boy, for uh, just a moment, that was a ball in his hands. But the defender did a, a nice job. And I think he got the hand, drove the hand through. 
Yeah, to break it up. That's uh, Jaden Jaden Lailson, a junior defensive back. Well, Brewer just hasn't quite found his groove at quarterback. He had that nice pass to Sergio early on, but right there he kind of threw behind Reedhead, who had to come back for the ball, allowed the defender to make a play on it. Nash is 4 out of 11 for 85 yards. Quarterback draw up the middle. Marker down and Brewer down as well at the 25-yard line. Usually that's in the vicinity of a hold. That's the umpire that threw the flag. And the umpire, yes, there's an umpire in football, everybody. And the umpire... I don't know. It's 90% of the flags that he throws are holding <laughs> holding flags, right? Well, I'm just trying to catch up to you on trying to be correct, okay? There's the big U on the on the back of the uniform. There's your umpire. As if you, you needed a bigger indicator, right? Give him a big capital U on the back of his uniform. I don't know. Okay, it's, an, it's a U for umpire. So they move him back. It's second in about 21, I believe, for the Cougars. Brewer throwing deep, left side. That is caught! Sholo out of bounds? No, incomplete. He must have caught out of bounds. Or was the ball dropped? Yeah, it was Kishbaugh on the receiving end. Yeah, he could not hold on to it. It looked like it was just dropped in beautifully by Nash. We talked about, you know, he's now four out of 12. That doesn't look too good, the number, but boy, this pass was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah, he dropped it right into Ryan Kishpaugh, who had it, and he tried to turn and run before he, he he had the ball. He wanted to see how far upfield he could get. Lost track of the ball, dropped it. Uh, he knew he knew he had a big gain on his hands, didn't he? Unfortunately, it just didn't he didn't finish the transaction. Third down and 21 now. Empty backfield for Brewer whistles and a timeout by the defense. There was a little confusion there on the Panther defense. It, Guys trying to figure out who's who's supposed to guard who. And uh, right there, the coaching staff for the Panthers calls the timeout. 30-second break here on the radio and on your live video as well for a word in from our friends at Cellular One. A minute 23 until halftime, everybody. The Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week is presented by Hatch Toyota, Sholo 26. Paradise Honors 21. We're back right after this. Attention, did you know that you may be eligible to receive a free data plan with 60 gigabytes of LTE data to use as a hotspot every month? If you live on tribal lands and are on a government assistance program like WIC, SNAP, Lifeline, Pell Grants, or Medicaid, Cellular One can help. Just ask for the Cellular One ACP plan. It comes with unlimited data and a 60 gigabyte LTE data hotspot. Get your free ACP plan at any Cellular One store today. ACP is a government benefit program and customers must qualify. Some restrictions apply. Limited time only. Non-transferable. Limited to one line per household. Back to Sholo High School, everybody. Floyd Simmons, Byron Brown in the broadcast booth, such as it is. It's just really the beautiful Sports Zone Radio canopy is all the booth is. And we're joined by our statistician, the lovely Sonia Simmons, and our production team led by our producer, Derek Simmons, our technical director, Fernando Quintana, and working cameras here tonight on this one, Sean Ulvestad, and the great Leonard Keone with us as well tonight on the broadcast. And look at Nash. They're giving chase. He lets it go downfield. That's going to be incomplete. And it will bring up a fourth and 21. Great pursuit on defense. And the guys, among those guys, giving chase. There is Vance Cooper. He was the closest guy. He got right there. He got a piece of Nash. And Brewer able to throw it away. And you can, if you get outside the tackle, you can throw the ball away here in high school football now as long as you get the ball. There's our broadcast booth. The beautiful sports zone radio canopy. If you, as long as you uh, get the ball past the line of scrimmage, you can throw it away. Something new this year in high school football. So fourth down at 21. Brewer on for the first solo punt of the game, and he's going to punch that one and get a great stop. I mean, he checks it up beautifully, and it's going to stop at about the seven-yard line. Great kick by, by Brewer. I mean, Nash can do it all, Byron, and he delivers a great punt for his team. Yeah, Penn's Paradise Honors back at their own seven with just a hair over one minute left. That's going to be a little difficult for Paradise to move the ball unless they get a, a big play. But here you kind of have to change your, your coaching philosophy. If you got the ball at the 20, you might be able to go for it. But here at your own seven, you got to take a little bit. You got to be a little bit more cautious with that ball, especially against the Cougar defense. Think about uh, trying to run the clock out, right? Baker. 
floating to the right, throwing downfield. His receiver makes the catch! Catch made out across the 45-yard line. Call it the 48. That's 41 yards on the pass play. And all of a sudden, with a minute one remaining in the half, the Panthers are in great field position. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, Floyd, something has to be wrong with Kishpaw. He has gotten beat on all these pass plays. That was Kishpaw again, getting beat deep. And Paradise honors seeing that and taking advantage of that one-on-one coverage that the Cougars are given to Kishpaw. Well, timeout is now taken on the field, and I didn't see who who uh, asked for that timeout, but I see that both teams have one left here in the final. Cholo, oh, Cholo took the timeout. Uh, final minute of this first half, so the Cougars on defense decide to try, see if they can shore it up back there somehow. But you look at Baker on the rollout here, and on the on the movement. Just delivers a beautiful pass downfield. And again, the receiver's in perfect position to receive that ball. Kishpaw is trailing on the play. Can't knock it away. Hey, First, give that man, give that young man a lot of a lot of credit there. Coleman Burkhart, the receiver, has three catches for 51 yards in the game and a touchdown. Baker rolls, throws to the sideline, pass caught, step out. And that ball is at the 41, gain of 11 on the play on the pass completion to Josh Morales. Well, Paradise Honors doing a nice job of, of creating room for their quarterback, Baker, right there. Rolling him out of the pocket, away from the pressure. And then they've got a receiver just doing a comeback route right along the sidelines. And Baker throws a dart right in between the numbers. So Paradise Honors using that sideline to perfection. Now they get the ball to the Sholo 42-yard line and plenty of time for a for an offense that can throw the ball well. Baker, active throw. Again to the sideline. There's another pass caught, and then Jeremy Kishbaugh with the hit out of bounds. Knocked him out of bounds. Clean hit on that side of the field. Short of the first down, Garrison ashed, but he's able to stop the clock. Or did they say incomplete? Hold on. Must be. It must have uh, been in, an incomplete pass. He was out of bounds when he got it. There you go. Yeah. Hey, I gotta give. I gotta give a lot of credit to the to the Paradise Honors fans, Byron. Outside of a couple of White Mountains teams, I have not seen a a crowd travel as well as this Paradise Honors group has. Look at that group. I mean. That's a really sizable visiting crowd up here in the White Mountains as we watch a pass incomplete over the middle. And we're looking for Morales again. That one is incomplete, and there's Jeremy Kishpa in on the play. But uh, kudos to the Paradise Honors fan contingency. Came up to the White Mountains to watch their team battle in the 3A state quarterfinals. 41 seconds remain here in the first half. Yeah, I don't think they're ready for uh, 29 degree weather here at, at night. I'm sure they tried to bundle up, but uh, they probably didn't quite have enough. Third down play coming up. Ball at the Sholo 41 yard line. Three receivers to the left of the formation. Baker's looking the other way though. And he's getting some pressure. S- escapes. Now unleashes for a first down to Morales downfield. Wow, how about Gage Baker keeping the play alive, sensing that pressure able to do something that most quarterbacks we've seen can't do, which is to get away from that show low pressure, and then he delivers downfield for a big first down. I'm going to not just talk about the athleticism of Baker. How about the arm of Baker right there? Rolling out of the pocket, throwing on the run, and throwing a dart to his receiver just sitting there, standing, sitting down at the, at the sideline, receiving that pass. 18 yards. The pass play, and they were able to get out of bounds, stop the clock with 32 seconds. Baker steps up and under pressure, unable to deliver on that crossing rod. It does go incomplete this time, and that solo pressure that time paid off. They didn't get the sack, but they did force the incomplete pass. Yeah, and that's what you're trying to do is just force the pressure, force Baker to make a quick throw. And right there, you're able to get pressure on him, and he's able to dump it off, get the incomplete pass. Gage Baker, 15 of 22 for 227 yards and three touchdowns. That is a huge game for any quarterback against the Sholo defense. Any defense, but especially against the gang green of Sholo Cougars. 
Second down play now. Ball at the 23-yard line of Sholo. Baker, marker down on the snap. They're letting him play it out, so that might be a defensive penalty. And it's going to skip in on the far side. Incomplete. And they are looking. They appear to be pointing toward the defense. Right. Well, they weren't appearing. They were actually pointing toward the defense. The question is, <laughs> what's the call going to be? This yeah. is an officiating crew that I'm unfamiliar with. They, they must be up from the valley, I'm guessing. Maybe Tucson. Maybe Tucson. Maybe Tuscaloosa. I have no idea. Maybe Tolson. Did they, did they refuse to wear the mic that you guys asked them to, to, to wear? You know, no, we, we don't ask him to wear a mic. No, I know. I'm just kidding. 22 seconds remain in the first half. The Mountain Mobile Auto Glass halftime report is on the way. That's actually an offensive penalty. Took him a while. So illegal substitution is the call. And it's going to bring up second down and 15 after a five-yard markoff. So that last play is a non-play. Baker works with the empty backfield. And one timeout here for the final 22 seconds. Baker. Right sideline, they ran the wheel routes. And I can't tell if Kishbaugh had a hold of the receiver's arm or if he was just reaching back and maybe trying to fish for a call. Let's see if we can see right. It was a little bit of a grab on the jersey there. I was there. gonna say, I think he had a little grab. They got away with one right there. Might have, for sure. It's incomplete. Third down and 15 now. 17 seconds remain in the half. And if you're Paradise Honors, who spends their final time out of the first half here right now to go talk it over. Byron, if, if you're Paradise Honors, I, I might have saved that time out because I think, Byron, you want to try at least to come away with three points. You want to try to get close enough to feel comfortable about kicking a field goal. And now they have put themselves in a position where they have to throw to, throw to the sideline if they can't get it into the end zone. If they throw in the middle of the field, I don't know if there's enough time to get up, get to the line, and clock it, and stop with time remaining. Well, I, I'm with you. I would have saved my time out. But I do feel that they have enough. If they get a first down, then they can. the time should stop, and then they can clock it and then kick the field goal. But with your time out on third down, if you were short, you call the time out, get it within field goal range, and attempt the field goal. Let's do this. Let's watch that clock if indeed it is a first down. And let's see what happens. Let's see how quick the trigger gets pulled on, on a first down whistle stoppage. Here's Gage Baker from the timeout. Third down and 15. Baker steps, throws the fastball right side, and could not get out of bounds, and it's short of the first down. So the clock is counting off. Needed 15, got 13 yards on that pass to Morales. Two seconds, one second, and they're going to run a play. They got it away. Throw to the end zone, and it's intercepted. And there's the run back. Here comes Ryan Kishbaugh. Kishbaugh is going to take it to the house unless he gets caught from behind, which he doesn't. You're kidding me. 102 yards is what I have that as. An interception return for touchdown. A back-breaking play by the Sholo defense. Well, we talked about Kishbaugh getting beat all the time. But here, he's able to make the play. Goes up, gets the ball in the end zone, and comes out. And because everybody's on to the right side, he comes out to his, to his right, which is the left of the whole team. And as we said, he's the fastest guy in the White Mountains. No one's going to catch him. And no one does all the way into the end zone. Number 13 had the opportunity. Not sure who that was. But he, did, he went for the fumble and didn't go for the tackle. Swing and gate. Nash Brewer up the middle. He's going to get in there. That's a two-point conversion. And, and just when it looked like Paradise Honors might take a halftime lead. Sholo is able to turn that completely around. And they'll go into halftime with all the momentum in the world. Sholo 34. Paradise Honors 21. I, I can hardly believe what I just 
saw, but it's that speed, it's that athleticism, it is the big play capability of the Sholo Cougars on display to close out this first half. There you go, on video, take another great look at Ryan Kishbaugh's one, I think it's 102 yards, I think it was two yards deep in the end zone when he picked it off, and then the convoy. And Ryan Kishbaugh, that's the way you finish out your senior year of football right there. What a play. Had a shot at him down the sideline, but it was something about Kishbaugh was not going to go down. What a play. Sholo leads it by 13. The Mountain Mobile Autoglass halftime report is on the way. Sports on Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Woo! Toyota. Stand by. It's that time of year again. You can feel the excitement in the air. You know what? Ah! It's our kickoff to savings event at Hatch Toyota in Sholo. And you don't want to miss our award-winning lineup of new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs. $24.99! $24.99! Hut, hut! New Toyota Corollas, Camrys, Ram4s, 4Runners, Tacomas, and Tundras. We have the best inventory in the White Mountains. Plus our low price guarantee. And every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care. Our complimentary maintenance plan for two years or 25,000 miles. Two 286 286 hot hot don't miss our kickoff to savings at Hatch Toyota in the Northern Arizona Auto Mall and hatchtoyota.com keeping the white mountains rolling for 31 years hi this is Chaz Hatch get our statewide low price guarantee on every new Toyota find out more at hatchtoyota.com or visit us today at the Northern Arizona Auto Mall in Cholo Summit Healthcare is committed to your healthcare experience from start to finish. They invite you to take advantage of the Summit Healthcare Retail Pharmacy. The pharmacy is conveniently located in Summit's outpatient pavilion, just steps away from the hospital. And most of Summit's clinics, they accept most insurance, including Medicaid, Medicare Part B, Medicare Part D, First Care, and IHS. Prescriptions are ready in just minutes, and you get curbside delivery too. The Summit Healthcare Retail Pharmacy, because Summit is committed to meeting your pharmaceutical needs. The team at Beam and Will Drilling is like a great football team. They work hard, they work as a team, and they play to win. Their reputation is second to none, and they proudly call the White Mountains their home, even though they complete projects throughout the entire southwestern United States and beyond. No project is too big or too small for Beam and Well Drilling, so when the time comes for you to punch a hole in the ground, remember the White Mountains' top well drilling team, Beam and Well Drilling. Call anytime, 928-205-7647. Go deep with Beam and Well Drilling. No matter the occasion, large, small, or just because, the Bloomhouse Floral Designs, located in Pine Top, will create the perfect a bouquet to capture your moment perfectly. Offering the widest selection of beautiful and unique floral designs and accents, the Bloom House serves as your personal creation expert. We are open to serve you Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 and Saturday from 10 till 4. Same day and rush deliveries are available. Stop by or order online at bloomhouseflorals.com. We've got a cool deal for you at Naked Mobile. Get the Samsung A11 smartphone free when you activate just one month of our 60 gigabyte plan. Starting at $75 per month, switch to Naked Mobile and get the free Samsung Galaxy A11 smartphone with 60 gigabytes of high-speed LTE data each month, and you can use your data as a hotspot. We've got you covered with unlimited nationwide talk and text and coverage on America's fastest networks. No contract, no credit check, no hidden fees. Get your free Samsung A11 smartphone at any cellular one store near you or at nakedmobile.com. The holidays are here, and you could probably use some extra cash. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint is giving away $500 cash. Not once, not twice, but every week now through Christmas. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint is known for having great incentives like dinners and movies, full service car washes, or $100 in window tint. But did you know all of our technicians are certified by the National Auto Glass Safety Council? Why? Because Auto Glass is a major factor in your vehicle's collision support. And because your family's safety is our number one priority. And whether you've been naughty or nice, you'll get a chance to win $500 cash given away each week now through Christmas. Call Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent today. 536 Welcome to the Mountain Mobile Halftime. A complete first half breakdown of tonight's Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week broadcast. 
This is the Mountain Mobile Halftime. It's uh, halftime, everybody. Welcome back in to Sholo Ford Stadium, the host site of this 3A state quarterfinal playoff game. The Sholo Cougars hosting the Paradise Honors Panthers. Sholo, the number four team in the bracket. Paradise Honors comes in as the number five seeded team in the state playoffs for 3A football. Welcome back, everybody. Floyd Simmons along with B-squared. Byron Brown on the Mountain Mobile Auto Glass halftime report. Byron, I thought you were taking off, man. I thought we were going to get Cody Brown here. Well, you'll second. get him in a second. He, I let him go first. Somebody had to grab a break? Yeah. That's what you're trying to tell me? Yep. Drink a little too much coffee before the game, maybe? In my case, yeah, coffee. In his case, it's power drinks. Oh, yeah, (laughs) of course, of course. So halftime right here. Well, I'll tell you who's drank the power drink is, uh, you know, Ryan Kishbaugh. How about uh, Ryan Kishbaugh closing out the first half? Look, Paradise Honors did a great job, Byron, to fight their way back from a 19-8 deficit. And in the final seconds of that half, could very easily be leading this game after they marched it downfield, got into scoring range, and then with seconds left, threw the ball into the end zone. Ryan Kishbaugh picks it off in the end zone and then and then houses it. Takes it the distance, 102 yards-ish for what has been so far the play of this game. What a play by Kishbaugh, and it just has to be deflating for Paradise Honors. They're instead, instead of leading this game at halftime, they're down by 13 right now. Yeah, how about that 14-point uh, swing right there for the for the Panthers of Paradise Honors. You go on, you're looking at taking a lead, something that hasn't been done all season long against the Sholo Cougars except for the Snowflake Lobos, okay? And one other time. And, and one other time. Payson. Payson was Payson, leading Payson half-time. had the halftime right. lead, yeah. So twice, but something that, that you haven't seen very often. And and here tonight, you, you had that one, and we talked about it, Floyd. We talked, hey, you should have saved your timeout for fourth down, right? You would have had enough time, but they didn't. They called on third down, threw it short, hurried the ball up, tried to get the ball off, threw a pass into the end zone, three green jerseys around it. Number six, Ryan Kishpaw comes out of the group of three and that's the one that you really didn't want to get because he had all the room in the world he had the green train ahead of him and steamrolled all the way down 102 yards for the touchdown you know what play that reminded me of yeah i, I know what one it reminded me of a heartbreaking uh, play for the, a for the arizona yes, cardinals absolutely just before right? super bowl right? against the steelers yes. the cardinal steelers yeah we're thinking Kurt the same Warner, thing boom and all of a sudden next thing you know it's going the other way, and that's that was a heartbreaker for the Cardinals, and that could be a detrimental heartbreaker play for the Panthers of Paradise. It's, it really was just such a deflating play. That crowd on that other side, that Paradise Honors crowd, they traveled well here. They've got a great uh, uh, fan contingency here at Cholo tonight, and you know that they were just feeling it, and they were excited, and their team was about to take a, a halftime lead against the higher-ranked and really just highly regarded Cholo Cougars. Everybody has grown to respect this team by a ton this year. Just like that, just like that, it's a, it's a two-score game here at halftime. Let's take a look at the scoring from that first half. And it was Paradise Honors that actually opened things up on their first possession of the game. At 9.09 of the first quarter, they scored a touchdown at the end of a 72-yard opening drive. 11 plays it took them in just under three minutes to get to the end zone. And Gage Baker, the quarterback, hooked up with Coleman Burkhardt on a very short touchdown pass. To open up the scoring, they also converted on, on the two-point try to make it 8 to nothing. Paradise Honors in front. Sholo struck back very quickly. They went 80 yards in just five plays on their first possession of the game. Two big plays, a big 21-yard play in the middle on a pass play. I believe it was to Colton Tidwell. And then the 45-yard touchdown pass to get into the end zone. Nash Brewer to Ryan Kishbaugh for that 45-yarder. And it came at 7.19 on the clock in the first period. 
Paradise Honors got the ball back, gave it up on downs, and the Cougars made them pay by going 53 yards on their second possession of the game. And the touchdown was a Ryan Kishbaugh eight-yard touchdown run. How about the theme here so far? Ryan Kishbaugh, right? He scored the second of his three touchdowns. One of those, that pass reception to open up Sholo scoring. Now that run, that rushing touchdown with 143 on the clock in the first quarter. The two-point conversion by Sholo was good, by the way, and it was set up by a penalty that moved the moved the ball to the one and a half yard line, and then Sholo ran it in to make it 16 to eight. The Cougars got the ball back their next time and scored on a 22-yard field goal by Calvin Morgan. Morgan converted at 7.14 on the clock in the second quarter. And Sholo's lead grew to 19-8 at that stage. Well, Paradise Honors struck quickly on their next possession. They threw a 61-yard touchdown pass. It was the only play of the possession. They got to the end zone in a hurry. Gage Baker, of course, the guy that delivered that touchdown, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was Josh Morales who hauled that in for the long touchdown. Let me just have a look. Yes, scroll down just a bit. Take a look at the stat sheet. And uh, Josh Morales, it was him on the receiving end of the 61-yard touchdown pass. He caught two touchdowns in the first half. And that one, that one with the... With the... uh, Trying to check and see if they got the two-point conversion. No, they went for one. And uh, they did kick it, didn't they? Wait, wait, that was uh, to get to 21? No, to get to 15. Yeah, to get to 15, they kicked it. So they kicked it. It was over 19-15. And then, to, and then Sholo was able to score. Nash Brewer, a 55-yard quarterback sneak. Listen, that's not uncommon for Nash Brewer and the Sholo Cougars, okay? It's, it's, it's one of their specialties. They know how to turn long quarterback sneak runs into touchdowns. They just do it, and they seem to do it with regularity. And... Nobody can stop Nash Brewer on his quarterback sneak. It's just the way it is. So a 55-yard touchdown run. The kick was good. And the Cougars at that stage of the first half with 5.56 on the clock in the second quarter had a 26-15 lead. Next possession for Paradise Honors, a touchdown. A nine-play drive for the team. They went uh, 64 yards on that drive and in just under three minutes got into the end zone and engage Baker to Josh Morales six yard touchdown pass they were unable to get the point after and the score at that point went to 26 21 Sholo still in front and then right there as the half was closing out Paradise Honors with a, a chance to get the ball into the end zone they went from their seven yard line in the final minute and eight seconds from their seven they got it all the way into the red zone of the Sholo Cougars and ended up throwing that pick six touchdown Ryan Kishbaugh intercepting in the end zone and you're looking at the highlights if you're watching the video as he takes it down the field and ends up with that 102 yard interception return the highlight of this game so far and a backbreaker to end the first half if you're a paradise honors fan wow what a what a first half of football our score 34 to 21 Sholo in front of paradise honors well byron as we uh, finish up our comments on the mountain mobile auto glass halftime report this paradise honors team is a little bit younger than Sholo. Sholo is a, a senior heavy team a lot of these guys for paradise are going to return next year including their quarterback gage baker a number of his targets in the in the passing game will be back um look it's a little bit younger team but they are really holding their own out there and and uh there's no question uh, about how much they deserve at least that number five ranking in my opinion coming into this one tonight yeah they're doing a great job especially uh, as young as they are uh didn't realize that they had so many uh, juniors and sophomores in the in the starting and the starters uh, for for Paradise Honors, and uh, they have come out and really battled against the Shallow Cougars. Look, the Shallow Cougars, we know what kind of team they are. They're the legit number four team, maybe even a little bit better. But uh, Paradise Honors has come up and uh, really decided to to show the fight in the dog here tonight. And, uh, and give the Sholo Cougars a, a game. And we'll see what happens here in the second half because of what happened at the end of the first half with that touchdown 
interception return by Ryan Kishbaugh. That could deflate any team, and we'll see how Paradise Honors is able to come out here in the second half. Is that going to be the, the nail in the coffin for them? Is that going to be the deflation, and they just can't get back up? Or do they use it as momentum, saying, hey, we were this close, let's get it done? Well, Byron, I'm going to let you grab a break, okay? And we're going to continue on to wrap up the Mountain Mobile Auto Glass halftime report. I'll look at the numbers here from that first half. And, and guess what, folks? In terms of offensive yardage in the first half, these teams are in a virtual deadlock. Cholo has a one-yard advantage at the half. Cholo's got 267 yards of total offense, 10 first downs gathered in by the Cholo offense. Time of possession, they've had the ball 14 minutes and 26 seconds so far in this game. Run 37 offensive plays, averaging 7.2 yards per offensive play. The Cholo team has featured the running game today. 182 yards rushing for the Cougars. They have thrown the ball for 85 yards in the game. Uh, they have been, uh, they have not turned the ball over. No, no fumbles. No interceptions. Penalized five times for 35 yards in that first half. Nash Brewer, the quarterback, is 4 of 13 for 85 yards and a touchdown to his credit. His teammate, by the way, Ray Pedraza, has thrown the ball one time. That was incomplete. Leading receiver so far is Ryan Kishbaugh. One catch for 45 yards. That was a touchdown. Colton Tidwell's caught one ball for 21 yards. Sergio Vialba, one reception for 15 yards, and Ray Pedraza, one catch for four yards in the first half. Running the football, the leading ball carrier is the quarterback, Nash Brewer. Five rushes, 86 yards, including one touchdown. It was that 55-yard quarterback sneak for Nash. Not uncommon. Ryan Kishbaugh, 10 carries for 42 yards. One of those is a rushing touchdown. Also checking in in the running game, Ray Pedraza, six carries for 36 yards. Carson Cooper, one rush for 14 yards. Jet Walker, one carry for four yards in the first half for Shola. On the other end, it's Paradise Honors with 266 yards of total offense, just one yard behind Sholo in this game. They have 11 first downs, and one more first down than Sholo's offense has been able to garner. Time of possession decidedly for Sholo. I mentioned over 14 minutes of first half possession. That means Paradise Honors has had the ball for 9 minutes and 34 seconds. Sholo ran 37 offensive plays. Paradise Honors has run 36 offensive plays. I mean, so much similarity between the two teams. 7.2 yards per offensive play for Paradise Honors. This is where the difference takes place. They've only rushed the ball for 39 yards, but they've thrown for 227. The Panthers have in that first half. Uh, they have the one turnover, that interception. That's it. The, the interception on the final play of the half. Take that away, and it's been a real clean game played by both teams. Both teams have been penalized five times. Sholo for 35 yards. Paradise Honors, five penalties for 22 yards in that first half. Gage Baker, the quarterback, 15 of 24 for 227. That's 63% pass completions. Three touchdowns, one fateful interception to Ryan Kishbaugh. So on the receiving end, it's going to be... Young Mr. Morales, Josh Morales, the leading receiver in the first half alone, six catches, 108 yards, two touchdowns for that young man, including a long of 61 yards for a touchdown. Also, Coleman Burkhart, three catches for 51 yards. Hank Stabler, two receptions for 44 yards. Garrison asked four catches for 32 yards. Jaden Laleson, one catch for five yards in the first half for Paradise Honors. And with that, we wrap up the Mountain Mobile Auto Glass halftime report, everybody. And the Panthers will kick it away. Ball checks up at the 15-yard line. It's put on the turf. It's still loose, and it looks like Paradise Honors is going to get a takeaway to start the second half. Nash Brewer returning, dropped it, fumbled around with it, and then going down, lost it. You see him right there. He had a shot at it. That was a good defensive play to take a shot on Nash and not let him come away cleanly with it. And the guy who ends up getting the football on special teams is Hank Stabler. He recovers, and we start the second half here. Paradise Honors working at the 22-yard line. Hand up up the middle. That's Vance Cooper. Cooper to about the 11-yard line. And... 
It is going to be Paradise Honors football at that stage. Wow, how about this turn of events? And imagine if Paradise Honors had gotten this and a touchdown to close out the first half. You talk about a huge momentum swing for the team. They had actually end up getting nine yards on that first down run. So second down and one. Gage Baker, the quarterback, with Vance Cooper in the backfield. Baker looks to throw. Benali chasing him out. And a throw toward the back of the end zone. That is caught for a Panthers touchdown. And so they come right, right out in the second half and strike on a 12-yard touchdown pass. Let's see that receiver at the back of the end zone and find out who hauls it in. And Jaden Lailson has his second reception of the game and a timely one indeed. Second play into the possession is a Paradise Honors touchdown. So we welcome you back in, everybody, to the Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week broadcast presented by Hatch Toyota. My name is Floyd Simmons, and here in this third quarter, we're going to get a drop-in visit in the broadcast booth with uh, a guy who's been calling a number of these solo games for us here at Sports Zone Radio this year. That's young master Cody Brown. <laughs> Cody, welcome in. Thank you, thank you. What a great night for football, and what a game we have here tonight for some playoff football with Sholo and Paradise going at it in a great game. And like you said, what a huge shift in momentum from coming out from that pick six and getting the turnover and a touchdown. Well, you've got to, you've got to make the statement. I mean, Paradise Honors needed something just like that. The way the first half ended for them, that really could be such a, a, a psyche killer for them. And uh, to be able to come out, to get that takeaway on special teams, and there's no question it was Sholo's fault. They put the ball on the ground. They, it was not a forced turnover. But to be able to get that and then cash it in, you cannot really, uh, you know, esteem how big that, uh, big a play that was. Yeah, that's huge for them. Just imagine if they come out, Sholo gets the pick six, and then come out, get the ball, drive down, score a touchdown. I think that pretty much puts the nail in a coffin for Paradise Honors, and yet they come out with that big play, and, and they're back in the game. So Sholo's lead is 34-28 after that. Here is the kick, and up the middle it goes! And this one is going to be likely, well, a long, long return. So Sholo says, take your momentum and put it somewhere else. <laughs> because you know what I was going to say. Sholo comes back with a great return by Carson Cooper. And all of a sudden, Cholo says, we're going to take that momentum right back here. Fantastic and, uh, job right there by Cholo. Special teams to come back. Carson Cooper running it down. Didn't quite have the speed to break it out for the touchdown, but he gets his team in good field position. Cougars give it up the middle. Spin move. And a nice run. Is that Pedraza carrying the ball? It is. What a run by Pedraza. Just downhill. Keeps the legs moving, spins out a few tackles. Great job by Pedraza. Ray Pedraza, after a great Carson Cooper kick return to the 20-yard line. And Pedraza takes that one on a 14-yard run up the middle. It's first and goal for Shola. Handoff left side, Jed Walker, the freshman, is going to dive in there. And he's in for the Shola touchdown. A six-yard Jet Walker touchdown. Great push by the offensive line by Sholo. Just opening up that hole. Pedraza coming in through the center untouched. And so is the running back. In for the Sholo touchdown. And this right here is the danger that Sholo presents. And I think among the top four ranked teams in 3A football, I just don't think anybody is as dangerous offensively and can strike as quickly as Sholo can. They, they have speed that is hard for anybody to match. And there's your touchdown. And now a word in from Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint, everybody. 41-28 Sholo in front in this 3A state quarterfinal game. The Sports on Radio Game of the Week is presented by Hatch Toyota. Stand by. The holidays are here, and you could probably use some extra cash. 
Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint is giving away $500 cash. Not once, not twice, but every week now through Christmas. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint is known for having great incentives like dinners and movies, full service car washes, or $100 in window tint. But did you know all of our technicians are certified by the National Auto Glass Safety Council? Why? Because Auto Glass is a major factor in your vehicle's collision support. And because your family's safety is our number one priority. And whether you've been naughty or nice, you'll get a chance to win $500 cash given away each week now through Christmas. Call Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent today. 536 Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. A little bit of an interesting return bit of a dangerous return at least initially but possession retained by paradise honors they take it out across the 25 to the 27 yard line to begin this new possession there's the guy that caught the touchdown pass a moment ago on the return there that's uh, Jaden Lailson for paradise honors and they'll set up shop their own 27 yard line to begin this possession welcome back in the sports zone radio game of the week is presented by Hatch Toyota Gage Baker had a great first half. Has a man open over the middle. Pass caught. And look at this speed. Wow, he ran away from the show of defense for a long touchdown run. Josh Morales, 73 yards. How about this? It's a boxing match out there. Punch for punch. Just going big play for big play. This is turning into a slugfest, these two teams. Trading big plays. We've seen a whole bunch of big plays in the last two minutes of clock time. Josh Morales has got some great speed. We talk about Cholo. We might want to start talking about how Paradise Honors has the athletes as well. Here's the team that is just fighting tooth and nail to stay in this one here. And a high point after try. That's going <laughs> to come up just shy. These two kickers with this, these two teams out here battling to see who can... Who can, who, can, who can master the flop shot a little bit better? <laughs> Phil Mickelson would be proud tonight. You know? Yes, he would. Well, that touchdown is going to inch us closer again. It's a one-score game, everybody. And this quick word in from White Mountain Regional Medical Center presenting sponsors of the Sports on Radio Player of the Game. It's the Sports on Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Toyota. We're back right after this. Imagine this, a professional healthcare partner that's concerned about you, your choices, your health, your safety. At White Mountain Regional Medical Center in Springerville, choice and elevating your healthcare experience is the mission of our new CEO, experienced physicians and friendly staff. Whether you need a rapid COVID-19 test, a vaccination, or you're looking to utilize the newest MRI, CT scan, or nuclear medicine technology, White Mountain Regional Medical Center, located in Springerville, is your healthcare partner when choices matter. Big thank you to White Mountain Regional Medical Center. Welcome back in the Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Toyota here in the 3A state quarterfinals. Deep kick and a ball fielded by Jet Walker at the nine yard line. Walker bringing it back and knocked down at the 29 yard line. A flag comes out right there. And with 10 minutes and 11 seconds on the clock here in this third quarter. Sholo 41, Paradise Honors 34. We got a game, we got a barn burner going on for you right here everybody. Find out what this uh, penalty is, and it looks like it's going to work against the Sholo Cougars on their return. Listen, we've got three touchdowns in the in the first minute and 43 seconds of the second half. Three touchdowns to go along with that one touchdown scored on the final play of the first half. And if you go back to 3:07 on the clock in the second quarter that's five touchdowns in the span of just under five minutes five touchdowns wow now what a deal we see the mark off against Sholo and the ball is going to go back and start this possession at the 12 yard line these defenses are getting torched out there except when they're doing the torching like uh, <laughs> like Ryan Kishbaugh did to end the first half under center, Nash Brewer 
Brewer was being worked on on the sideline. Might be cramping a bit, but he gives off to Ryan Kishbaugh, and he's off to the races down the left sideline across midfield. The, he dikes him on the cutback, and he keeps it running. <laughs> and Ryan Kishbaugh takes it from the 12-yard line out inside the 20, maybe inside the 15. So we'll look for the spot. Another big play in this big play game. Could you imagine that first play out? Another big play by Sherlock Cougars and Ryan Kishbaugh. Phenomenal. See where they spotted him down. I think the 16 yard line. I got that as a 72 yard run by Kishbaugh. First down at the 16 yard line of Paradise Honors. Sholo, once again, poised to strike. I'm gonna fake it to Take it to Pedraza, right side, Nash Brewer, untouched, touchdown, Sholo. Another touchdown in this high-flying, high-scoring playoff matchup. And how about the block on the end by Zane Engel? Getting that edge, setting the edge with a big hit, letting Nash Brewer get the outside for an easy touchdown. Well, Nash is going to make his way back to the huddle, but I gotta tell you, he, he looks like he's feeling it out there. Maybe that left leg tightening up on him. Here's the point after try, and that looks pretty good. Cholo's gonna nail that one. And a word in from our presenting sponsors of the Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week. That's Hatch Toyota, everybody. 9.51 on the clock, third quarter. It is 48 to 34. The lead right now for Cholo, stand by. At Hatch Toyota Sholo, we want your late model good condition vehicle. We're buying. Sell us your car. Stop by Hatch Toyota in the Northern Arizona Auto Mall for a free, no obligation quote. We're paying top dollar, often over Kelly Blue Book. The used car market is at its peak, and your current vehicle will never be worth more. Sometimes more than you paid for it. We'll buy from you even if you don't buy from us. Get a free Carfax report and no obligation quote. Get a quote, get a check. It's that easy. Give me a G. Give me an A. Give me a Q. Give me a G. Give me an A. Give me a C. What's that stand for? Get a quote. Get a check. Hatch Toyota in the Northern Arizona Auto Mall and HatchToyota.com. Keeping the White Mountains rolling for 31 years. Sholo's kickoff. That's going to land in a, in a really nice spot. Finally picked up by Lelson. Escapes a couple of coverage defenders and then steps out on the Sholo sideline right in front of Cutter Pepper. And Paradise Honors has the ball out just shy of their 30-yard line to begin a new possession. And if this opportunity for the Paradise Honors offense is anything like the last, oh, I don't know, five and a half minutes of clock time in this game, Cody Brown, Paradise Honors is about to score a touchdown. And a big one, too, for a big play. We'll see if the Cougars can kind of turn that whole thing around. I just noticed that Nash Brewer has been pulled off the defense. Jake Decker is out there. Here's a handoff up the middle. That's Vance Cooper carrying the football, and he's got some yardage, some positive yardage. We'll see where they mark him down and get that gain for his Panther offense. Just about a yard gain on that play for for Paradise right there, getting getting stuffed by that Sholo defense and that that D-line. Second down to nine. Sholo with no safety over the top against a team that knows how to run that deep middle route. They're not going to do it here. Pass is caught and delivered, and that's going to be a swarming Cougar defense out there. Kishball there. And Looks like uh, Vialba uh, getting in on the tackle and on the receiving end. I believe it was Coleman Burkhardt. It was. Also, Easton Pena helping out on the tackle for the Cougars. Four-yard gain on that pass play. Third down and five. Paradise honors. Fewer times that they can ask themselves 
to convert a third down, the better for them. Again, no safety help over the middle for the Cougars. They're gonna, they roll their safety up. That's Ryan Cashball rolling, rolling up tight to the formation. Leave that middle open and a pass over the middle. Got a battle and fight for the extra yard, but I'm telling you, that's short of a first down. Mm -hmm. Another pass completion to Burkhart. No, this time it's Stabler on the receiving end of the pass, and he didn't run the sticks route right where he needed to. He's going to end up a yard, a little more than a yard shy, four-yard gain. And Sergio coming off limping a little bit, hurting. I don't know if it's that's just a cramp or he took a hit. But they replace him in that defense. And you know that Nash Brewer must be, he must be suffering something because he's not on the field in a, in a big moment, big time, in a big game. There's Nash, they're working on him on the sideline. And if, if I'm Paradise Honors, we get a timeout. That one is taken by Sholo, actually, defensively. On fourth down and one for Paradise Honors. If, if, if I'm, and I think that Nash, by the way, is going to return to the lineup. I was going to say I'm going to go after whoever was uh, Nash's replacement out there on the field, but now Nash is back. And I also think this. I think that Paradise Honors would do themselves a huge favor to punt the football. Yes, yes, they would. Your offense has been good. Your defense has been doing okay. And I think you, back in your own territory, I think you would elect to take the punt. But they're going for it here on fourth down. And it's playoff football. They're going for it. And the pass is caught by Stabler. And Stabler is bumped out of bounds. But he's got the first down. Well, Stabler gets it done on the receiving end. Gage Baker delivers nicely. Just a nice little package route they put together. Cleared out and found a little space there to work. Three-yard gain for a first down. I think Show was expecting a big pass play right there. Didn't want to get beat on a fourth down like that and they ended up just dumping it off, getting the first down. Sholo likes their, their athlete matchup, man for man, because there again, there's no safety over the top on this Sholo defense. Back to throw Baker, he gets flushed, and with pressure steps up and throws it away, it's incomplete. That'll bring him second down to 10. Well, how about going for it, huh? Going for it in your own territory. Plenty of time left in the third quarter, so a lot of time in the game. You're down right now by two scores, and it's just unexpected by me, even on fourth and one. I just don't expect to see them go for it, but give them a lot of credit. Hey, Paradise nice Honors knew what they were doing. Maybe they're looking at the analytics. The analytics said, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're talking about the L.A. Dodgers call, <laughs> calling their offense for them? Here comes the pass over the middle, and that is, boy, that was dangerous. The, the umpire had to dive out of the way. He almost caught a pass for a nice gain. He decided to opt out of the play, and I thought that was going to go right into the hands of the defender. Look at the defender right in the middle of the field. Is that Pena? That was Carson Cooper. The incomplete pass stops the clock. Also brings up third down at 10. Cholo crowd making a lot of noise. Yeah. Feeling it. Waving Big. the flags. Let's get a shot of those flags. Can we? Oh, they're waving the flags. Here we go. The growl towel, they call it. The growl towel. Here's the pass oh. broken up by Carson Cooper. He steps in front of a pass intended for Vance Cooper. Cooper on Cooper. And the Sholo version won that matchup to bring up, bring up fourth down to 10. Great job by Cooper reading that route, cutting it in front. And only if he would have picked it off, he would have had an easy six. Three straight incomplete passes in that sequence for Gage Baker. Of course, that doesn't, that's not going to help the, uh, the personal stats. He now goes to 20 of 32 in the game for 323 yards. He has thrown five touchdowns against this great Sholo defense. They're going for it. They're going for it. Baker, deep over the middle. Intercepted. Ryan Kishbo having the game of his life has another interception. And he's going to get tackled after a, a great return. Well, listen, it was like a punt. 
until they didn't make a tackle. <laughs> it's like a punt with a great punt return, and that kid right there, I mean, he has just inked himself a first-team All-State selection. He was going to be one anyway, but this game that he has put together in the quarterfinals, Ryan Kishbaugh has been amazing. I think he's making a strong case for player of the game right now, for sports zone player of the game, and he's showing it. And he's showing why he was one of the 3A players, best 3A players in this. So Sholo, after a great return on the interception, Sholo's going to go to work. They're going to hand it off. And Jet Walker is able to pick up a handful of yards on this carry. How about a gain of four on the play? I like the play call opening up for Sholo right there. Keeping the ball on the ground, doing what's successful. Running the clock a little bit and picking up yards while doing it. So they had gotten the ball at the 34 yard line to start this sequence. Gain of four right there. Handoff goes up the middle. Pedraza this time and he'll be about a yard shy of the first down. So give Chicken a five yard gain on the play. Good hole right there opened up by the Charlotte Cougar offensive line and just lets Pedraza run through it, pick up some extra yards with his legs, pushing and getting close to that first down marker. So third down and one is the situation for the Sholo offense. I formation, handoff Walker, first down and more. And we'll see where they mark him down. Sholo moving the chains, taking advantage of that tough offensive line. Guys like Robert Long up front, blocking for Jet Walker on the play. And again, if seven. First down. The ball now marked at the 19-yard line for the Cougars, and they'll give it up the middle to Pedraza, battling his way to a Sholo touchdown. Great job by the Sholo Cougar offense once again. Getting that offensive push, getting the confusion from the defense with the option, or the fake, I should say, and just handing it to their guy, the horse, Pedraza, and he runs up the middle for a Sholo touchdown. Well, everybody's getting involved, and that's kind of what you get with the Shola Cougars. They get a lot of different people involved. For the first time today, it's Ray Pedraza getting to the end zone, a 19-yard touchdown run, and an opportunity for us to get a word in from Beeman Well Drilling after the point after is successful. Sholo 55, Paradise Honors 34, the Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Toyota. The team at Beam and Well Drilling is like a great football team. They work hard, they work as a team, and they play to win. Their reputation is second to none, and they proudly call the White Mountains their home, even though they complete projects throughout the entire southwestern United States and beyond. No project is too big or too small for Beam and Well Drilling, so when the time comes for you to punch a hole in the ground, remember the White Mountains' top well drilling team, Beam and Well Drilling. Call anytime, 928-205-7647. Go deep with Beeman Well Drilling. Great look on the replay by our fantastic production team led by our producer, Derek Simmons, who also gave you that, that shot. Yeah, we got a producer that's on the field with the camera. And only Sports on Radio knows how to pull that off, okay? And <laughs> our producer does a tremendous job. So, Derek, congratulations on the job well done. Keep it up, man. Good broadcast coming together. Our technical director is Fernando Quintana. As you see the head coach of Sholo there, that is Carlo Hernandez. Also on our crew tonight, joining us for this one, just he did not want to miss out on it, Leonard Keone. Here with us working camera and Sean Ulvestad as well. Statistician Sonia Simmons. Here's a ground ball picked up at the 20-yard line by Lelson. And he'll bring it out across the 30-yard line to near the 35 
for Paradise Honors. Well, they'll set their offense up with 5.09 left here in the third quarter. This has been an unbelievable third period. We've we've only played seven minutes of this third quarter, and we've had five touchdowns scored by these two teams. And typically, this is what we've seen throughout the season from Sholo, is in the first half, you see him doing great, but they might struggle a little here and there, a little miscommunication. But by the second half, they pick it up, and they're just on a tear. Handoff goes straight up the middle. Vance Cooper is going to be in, is going to be upended by Ryan Kishbaugh. Kishbaugh, that was about who could get the lowest on that one. Watch these guys get those pad, pads down as low as possible. And Kishbaugh holds him to an eight-yard gain on that play. Team's taking some time getting it set. Second down and a couple coming up. Hand off to Cooper again. And Cooper is met right in the middle by Zane Angle and a whole bunch of Sholo Cougar defenders helping to drive him back. Gabe Benali peeling himself up off that, off that pile. There's Easton Pena as well and a one-yard pickup on the play. That's another thing we've seen from Sholo all year long is that defensive line just absolutely holding up the wall, getting back in the backfield and not allowing a ton of rushing yards for the other team. Right at the four minute mark here, the third period. I don't think Paradise Honors has finished scoring, but they're gonna have to score a bunch. Josh Morales, he is able to escape. Would be tackler on the far side. And Morales is able to take it out to the 48 yard line. Five yard gain on that short pass from Gage Baker. Good job by Paradise Honors right there. Understanding that third and short, passing game has been their game so far and just dumping it out, getting the first down. 55 to 34, that's our score tonight here at Sholo Ford Stadium, the site of our 3A state playoff quarterfinal matchup between the Cougars and the Panthers. That first down, pick up the ball at the 48 yard line. Baker rolls out to his left. And he's going to stumble and fall. And it looks like, boy, it just looks like a long game. Is, is, it got to him on that one. The legs just wouldn't. They wouldn't support him. They're going to be sued for lack of support there as he goes to the ground. And I will now here pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Sports Zone Radio Network. This is Sports Zone Radio. Sports Zone Radio. Champions play here at Sports Zone Radio. That was actually 10 yards lost on that last play. Swing it out right side to Vance Cooper, and Cooper's going to get a little bit of that back on what was at the time a second down and 20 play. And I want to remind you that you are listening live and local in the White Mountains on the Sports Zone Radio, home of our broadcast coverage for the White Mountains. That's Mix 98 KRFM Sholo. There was a three yard pickup on that previous play, so it's third down and 17. For Paradise Honors. Final couple of minutes of the third quarter. Three receivers to the left for Gage Baker. Baker is looking over the middle. And he's going to step up, and now he wants to run. Give Sholo, again, tons of credit for making it tough on that quarterback to get comfortable in the pocket. They force him out, and... Yeah, just a short gain, five yards, bring up third down and 12. Going back to that first down play, it's a little interesting that they would roll out to the left when he's a right-handed quarterback, and it's a hard throw to make when you're a right-handed quarterback rolling out to the left. Maybe I said third down. It's actually fourth down, fourth and 12. Timeout. Paradise Honors will spend... A timeout right here that leaves them with two timeouts after the Sholo also, by the way, has two timeouts. And we still have two minutes and nine seconds left in the third quarter of this one. Before I grab a word in and a timeout here, word from the Bloomhouse Floral Designs Shop in Pine Top. Before that, I want to mention that the season has ended for the Holbrook Roadrunners. The mighty, mighty Roadrunners have lost to Wilcox tonight. 51 to 12 was the final score. I want to thank Thank Greg Perkins, the athletic director at Holbrook, and a sports on radio guy himself for bringing that. Here's a word in from the Bloom House. Stand by, everybody. 
No matter the occasion, large, small, or just because, the Bloomhouse Floral Designs, located in Pine Top, will create the perfect bouquet to capture your moment perfectly. Offering the widest selection of beautiful and unique floral designs and accents, the Bloomhouse serves as your personal creation expert. We are open to serve you Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 and Saturday from 10 till 4. Same day and rush deliveries are available. Stop by or order online at bloomhouseflorals.com. Quarterback draw. That's going to get shut down right now by Cutter Pepper. Pepper's had a great last three weeks of football for Sholo. It's a no gain on the play. And that fourth down and 12, Mysterioso call is all I'm going to call that because I don't <laughs> quite understand it. And that is going to get shut down, and Sholo takes over with a short field. I think they're trying to run the, the Sholo special right there with the quarterback sneak. But you don't have Nash Brewer back there, and I don't think it's going to work out the way you want it to. Yeah, I think only Sholo knows how to run the Sholo special. Yep. <laughs> something about it. And what there is really is there's something about Nash Brewer. Offset I formation behind Brewer. The fullback. The up back is Pedraza, and they're going to throw back to the quarterback downfield. And it's nearly intercepted. Probably should have been intercepted. That was not Ryan Kishbaugh's finest moment right there as the ball hung up. And there were three defenders. They weren't really all that fooled on the play. And the ball was catchable for one of those defenders. And you'll see it right here. That, yeah, probably should have been an interception. Paradise Honors going to be kicking themselves at a lost opportunity and an offensive penalty. So I guess the play doesn't even really count. It's not going to be... A negative offensive stat for a guy who's had a heroic game, Ryan Kishba. How about that? Speaking about the Sholo special, what about the Philly special? Letting the quarterback go out on a route. Just not quite executed how they wanted yeah, to. It's always the special, man. <laughs> the special of the day. First down play. Up the middle it goes. Pedraza the carry. Ray is being tasked now with some of that tough milk the clock yardage. Try to shorten this game. Four-yard gain for Pedraza. Ten carries, 78 yards, and a touchdown in the game for Pedraza. Yeah, good job by Pedraza to get that yardage back on, from that penalty. Get it back to second and about 11, but getting that yardage back on that penalty. 85 seconds remaining in the third period. Think it to Pedraza. There's the option. Pitch out to Ryan Kishbaugh, and he races to the edge and gains first down yardage plus. They needed 11, and they got right at 12. First down, Sholo. And Pedraza again showing the speed, showing how he can get that outside edge. And Paradise Honor is just not quick enough to get there. That was actually Kishbaugh that carried, and he is able to move the chains. Stepped out of bounds, stopped the clock, minute 14. Left in the period. From the gun, nope, under center, sorry. Play action, throw back, wide open, pass is caught. That is Colton Cloyd, who takes the ball inside the five yard line. How about that play right there? How about Colton Cloyd getting his first touch of the game? Coming in, a little banged up, but getting the call and executing it with Absolute ease. Well, I got to tell you, I love this. That's a 31-yard pass play. Colton Cloyd is playing injured. He doesn't really get to play much at all. And I just love that Coach uh, Coach Hernandez is, is letting him get into the game and get some action here. He's a senior. He's been injured. He's going to have to have surgery, I believe, at, at some point on his leg. He really can't play nearly 100%, but to get out there and get a chance to play as they hand it off and get Ryan Kishbaugh into the end zone again. This time a four-yard touchdown run. But that, that touchdown set up by the great pass and catch to Colton Cloyd. A good job right there by Zane Engel and Colton Cloyd again getting that edge. That's where they've missed him the most, I feel like is getting that edge block and just letting Brian Kishbaugh show off his speed getting into the end zone. Yeah, Sholo starting to run away with this game in the final moments of the third quarter, everybody. They lead now 62 to 34. I think you could pretty much pronounce the game out of reach at this stage. 
Word in from Cellular One, everybody. Look at that pass. From Kish uh, from uh, Brewer and the catch by Colton Cloyd. He gets a big contribution in his final season as a Cougar in the playoffs. 62-34, Sholo in front of the Sports on Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Toyota. We've got a cool deal for you at Naked Mobile. Get the Samsung A11 smartphone free when you activate just one month of our 60 gigabyte plan. Starting at $75 per month, switch to Naked Mobile and get the free Samsung Galaxy A11 smartphone with 60 gigabytes of high speed LTE data each month and you can use your data as a hotspot. We've got you covered with unlimited nationwide talk and text and coverage on America's fastest networks. No contract, no credit check, no hidden fees. Get your free Samsung A11 smartphone at any cellular one store near you or at nakedmobile.com. Well, let's see, Cody, you, you call in this third quarter. Byron Brown returns for the fourth quarter. I can promise you he is not going to get to experience in the fourth quarter anything nearly like what you did here in this third quarter. The mo- <laughs> maybe the most prolific quarter of football we have ever seen. Here at Sports on Radio, we've been doing this for 30 years. I cannot remember what a single quarter between two good football teams like the one we're seeing here in this third period. How about one, two, three, four, five, six touchdowns between these two teams? And Cholo getting the edge here. They have scored four of the six, but these two teams lighting it up out here. Incredible. Just incredible play by both teams, both offenses coming out. And and like we said all year, we've seen Shola come out in the second half with just a different fire. They just come out and seem to be on the same page and show that they're the better team in this third quarter. Hand off up the middle. Vance Cooper. And he's got, he's got a handful. He'll get six yards on what might be the final play of this third quarter. Got 13 seconds. And again, shout out to Colton Cloyd, playing injured, coming back, making a big play. And I, I've heard him in therapy talking about how he wants to make a difference for this team, no matter how it is, no matter how many plays he gets, he wants to make a difference, and he did here tonight. Certainly did. He got to make a contribution as a senior for the Sholo Cougars, and they are comfortably in front now, 62-34, as we close out the third quarter. The final 12 minutes of this quarterfinal matchup on the way. Stand by. Sports on Radio Game of the Week is presented by Hatch Toyota. We're right back after this, everybody. You know that excited feeling you get after you buy a car? You'll walk around it five or six times checking it out. You send selfies to your friends. You grab your family, friends, and coworkers the next day to see your new car purchase. Did you feel that happy when you were going in to buy it? Hatch Toyota's thinking is that you should be just as happy before you buy it as you are after. We start by not doing something. We do not have commissioned sales reps. At Hatch Toyota, we believe in non-commissioned product specialists. They're salaried, so they have no reason to pressure you to do anything. They understand that a great customer experience will lead you to telling your friends and your family about your experience. So when you're approached on the lot or in the showroom, you don't have to panic. Their task is to help you find the best vehicle for your lifestyle and your budget. Hatch Toyota Product Specialists. Keeping the White Mountains rolling for 31 years. Or shop online all the time at HatchToyota.com. While watching the video, you see a pass interference call against the Sholo defender Jake Decker down that right sideline as we now get this. Fourth quarter underway. Welcome back in, everybody. Floyd Simmons rejoined by B squared Byron Brown here for the third quarter, fourth quarter. And a 62-34 lead right now for Sholo. Paradise Honors in desperation mode. Deep pass is incomplete. Contact downfield like we saw in the previous play this time. No call. And it's incomplete to the end zone. Yeah, if you're the honors, uh, Paradise Honors receiver right there, I think you got that's close enough that you got to lay out for it right there. You got to make an effort. Get get dirty, as they say. Help out your quarterback right there. You had a little step on him, and uh, right there, it's right at your feet. Got to got to dive. Make the diving grab. Line of scrimmage, the 39-yard line of Sholo. Second down and ten. Vance Cooper. 
Bounces. And then tracked down from behind by Carson Cooper. Got a hand on him. Then Jeremy Kishbaugh came up to uh, came up to make the stop. Three-yard gain on the play for Cooper. Byron, you stepped aside for the third quarter. Gave Cody Brown a opportunity, and all he did was bring six touchdowns to the table in that third quarter. Well, I was going to say that uh, I don't think either team probably wants to see me uh, here for the fourth quarter after what Cody bought. Probably going to be a shutout in the fourth period. Throw deep, Baker, and his pass is off the mark incomplete. Well, one thing's for sure. Gage Baker is the real thing, Byron. He, he really is, but he's also working against this team that knows how to bring a lot of pressure. Look at all those bodies coming up the middle, forcing him into a little bit uncomfortable bit of footwork there, and and, and for that reason, the, the ball comes up shy on his pass deep. But I like the quarterback. I like him a lot. It's just he's working against a team that's going to always make it difficult. Yeah, this defense of the Cougars, they've given up 34 points, but they still take pride in getting that quarterback and putting the rush. Baker flushed and on fourth down, and seven has to throw it away, and he does. I believe he's on a string of at least five consecutive incomplete passes. Pardon me on that. Now three three straight incomplete passes by by Baker, and that's going to turn it over to Shola. Well, there you go. Paradise Honors doesn't want me here. They they just turned the ball over on downs. So that was zero touchdowns on their series here in the fourth quarter. Let's see what Shola does on their series. If they don't score, I'm giving it back to Cody. I'm going to make a prediction right now. They're not going to score. <laughs> Thanks to you. Well, Cody better be ready. He better be getting warm up again, getting that arm loose, come in for the closer role. Well, with a now a big lead, Sholo will set up at their own 37-yard line and give it up the middle to Chicken. And he will get toppled but not before he is able to pick up five. Make it six, six yards on the play. Well, Sholo up by four scores here in the fourth quarter, and uh, it's all, all almost all but over, and they're going to have some work to do going into next week's game against most likely Thatcher down at Mountain Point. We'll get some uh, finals for you as soon as possible. We'll find out what those other quarterfinals are, are looking like. Here's Brewer getting a great block that ends up, looks like, uh, you know, injuring one of those Paradise Honors players. Nothing bad about the block, but good job in protection. Nash's pass downfield is incomplete. Stops the clock. 10-15 remaining here in regulation this 3A state quarterfinal matchup. The Sports on Radio Game of the Week is presented by Hatch Toyota. Well, I, I have a question on that because I didn't think you could have a blindside block. You had to... Wasn't blind. You, you, you can't No, he was up. right in front of him. Most likely, I've seen most times where the guy just kind of ineligible man downfield anyways. But... Um, <clears throat> But anyway, it's it's one of those things where they've been teaching now, which I've seen a lot, and it, it's worked, and it stopped a lot of penalties from that block in the back and such, is where you just kind of step in front of the guy and let him kind of run over you, but you've slowed down the momentum. Yeah, the other thing you can do, Byron, is is you can, as long as you lead with your hands, not that, he, not that the blocker did in that situation, but you, as long as you lead with your hands, you can block a player that doesn't see you. I can't remember how they actually phrase that as we watch Yolo give it up the middle. And on third down and about nine, yeah, they gain nothing, no gain on that on that play. Okay, if you're Coach Hernandez and the coaching staff for the Sholo Cougars, you're happy with, with what could be a victory here tonight moving on to the semifinals. But you seeing that you've got a lot of work to do defensively because you gave up 34 points here in the in, in this game. Third down play. Sholo trying to get the play out to the offense. And they didn't like how things were developing. So with 9.33 remaining here in the fourth period, timeout taken by the Cougars. 
Well, Joel's on the threshold of scoring 70 points in this game. And you know, and they're doing it against a good, solid opponent. They are, and let's give credit, as you've mentioned all night, Floyd, about the Panthers of Paradise Honors, how young they are, that they have a lot of sophomores and juniors, and, and especially the quarterback that's a junior, that they've come up here and they've given the fight to the Sholo Cougars here at, at Cougar Stadium. I mean, they, they right off the bat, turnover in the third quarter score, and then Sholo scored, and then they had a long pass. They've, they've gone. They just don't have the firepower or the experience that the Sholo Cougars have here tonight. But give credit to Paradise Honors. They're going to be a team to look forward. Uh, look to next year. Absolutely, yeah. you got to consider them one of the favorites to win the 3A in 2023. They're trying to take care of business right here, but with nine and a half minutes remaining, that 28-point deficit is like a is like Mount Everest right now. Play action up the middle. Nash Brewer, Jets are on. There he goes. Goodbye. Nash on his way. Touchdown, Sholo. <laughs> You know, early on in this game, Nash Brewer was making a contest for the Sports Zone Player of the Game presented by White Mountain Regional Medical Center. And then Ryan Kispaugh had that big play just before halftime. And then in the third quarter, Ryan Kispaugh was doing it all. But Nash Brewer decided to say, hey, guys, I'm still here. And this is why I'm the Player of the Year in the 3A Northeast Division right there on that scamper for a touchdown. That is a 62-yard touchdown run for Brewer. And instead of going for the point after try, I believe that... Well, there's a penalty, so it's going to be against Paradise Honors. They're going to move it half the distance. And uh, so the offense comes back out, try to make it an even 70 right here. I don't know if we call that the swinging gate formation anymore, but the, the, it's the, similar to the old swinging gate. You know, normally on the swinging gate, you're still lined up to try and, or at least give the look like you're going to kick. Brewer is going to take the snap, and it just it's just not fair. Abe dives into the end zone and makes it 70. Show 70. Paradise Honors 34. The Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Toyota. The holidays are here, and you could probably use some extra cash. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint is giving away $500 cash. Not once, not twice, but every week now through Christmas. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint is known for having great incentives like dinners and movies, full service car washes, or $100 in window tint. But did you know all of our technicians are certified by the National Auto Glass Safety Council? Why? Because Auto Glass is a major factor in your vehicle's collision support. And because your family's safety is our number one priority. And whether you've been naughty or nice, you'll get a chance to win $500 cash given away each week now through Christmas. Call Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent today. The show a line drive kickoff is fielded. At the 15-yard line, Lailson is summarily dumped at about the 28-yard line. Nice job, Jet Walker. Special teams making that tackle for the Sholo Cougars. 9-16 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Sholo back on the board again. It was a four-play, 73-yard drive that took just a minute, 41 seconds. Nash Brewer, 62-yard touchdown run. Two-point conversion. And our score is 70 to 34. Sholo getting ready for a trip to the semifinals. And we're going to get timeout called by the defense. They couldn't get a couple of guys off the field. They were trying to run out there. Get them off, so they called timeout to avoid a penalty. Well, when you're leading like this with 9.15 left, you're leading by 36 points. You can afford to call a timeout. 
spend your last one, and they did. <laughs> yeah, you're not worried about timeouts at this situation, but what you want is you don't want a freebie play for the other team because you're trying to make the substitutions, get the guys that get some playoff, some young, your younger guys get playoff experience and not have enough guys on the field and allow this offense of the Panthers to get a freebie. 70 to 34, Shola is, well, they're going, they're going to advance. They're going to get on to the next round. They're going to get to the semis to play either Thatcher or Valley Christian. And frankly, we just don't have an update. Let's see if I can get one of those for you here on that score here in just a moment. Meanwhile, Paradise Honors working from their own 29 yard line. By the way, Byron, I'm going to give you, I want to thank Quinn Ashton, who is one of our friends here at Sports on Radio and a, an official here in Northeast Arizona. I'm going to give you a note that he sent us a while ago. Pass deep, pass caught, Stabler. Out of bounds with a first down for Paradise Honors. Let's check it. He got out at the 45. That's a 26-yard pass playing a first down. Hey, nice pass right there by Baker. No quit in the Panthers here right there. Stabler running a little sideline route. Going across slant to the to the sidelines. And look at that. Just dropped in that dime by Baker. Ball at the 47-yard line. We're going to change that to a 24-yard gain a moment ago. Throw it up there. Break a tackle. Walk into the end zone. Paradise honors. Well, not finished scoring. There's a 47-yard touchdown pass. And the guy on the end of it, Coleman Burkhart. Well, Jeremy Kishpaw is going to get an earful here on whenever they review film on Sunday or Monday because he had the tackle. He got beat on the route, but he had the tackle, and he just got let the guy right through his arms and into the end zone for Paradise Honors. Hey, you know, you think it might be ticky-tack when you have 70 points, but you've given up 41 here. I think the most tonight and the most this season. Uh, for the show of Cougar defense. How about getting 70 points but never getting to a running clock? How about that, huh? That doesn't <laughs> happen. That almost never happens in your history. Here's a uh, two-point conversion that is completed on a pass to Garrison Ast. And uh, the two-point is good. So our, our score here is Sholo 70, Paradise Honors 42 as we stay right here with it. And I will send a text message out to try to get you a score on Thatcher versus Valley Christian. But let me uh, let me mention something because I don't want to get this out of the way here. Um, one of our officiating friends, Quinn Ashton, who you'll see on that Paul Hancock officiating crew, okay? He's a St. John's fella. Quinn says this in response to something we discussed earlier in the game, Byron. He says there are only four penalties that are automatic first downs in high school. Four penalties, ready? Roughing the kicker, roughing the punter, Roughing the snapper, roughing the passer. So a hold is not an automatic first down. A pass interference is not an automatic first down if you don't get the yardage out of it. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. So thank you to Quinn Ashton for settling some things. Now, I will tell you this, Quinn. I appreciate it. And you know what? We will forget that in uh, short order by next week for me <laughs> we'll we'll forget all of that because that's just what we do and especially when you learn that information when it's this cold here's an onside a kick attempt but we're going to get a uh, marker down maybe an offside perhaps on the kicking team they're bringing it back no maybe uh, they maybe they just weren't ready <laughs> oh no yeah Ill illegal procedure now they'll mark off the five yards. Okay, so that's going to go back, and they'll kick from the 35-yard line. And I do have a final score. Thatcher is victorious tonight. Thatcher beat Valley Christian. Final score, 56-35. Big thank you to our good friend Joe Bjorn for the on-the-spot report. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. Thatcher advances with a victory in the quarterfinals over Valley Christian. So, Sholo, and I'm going to say it, and it might be with nine minutes left in the game, this might not make the... Panther fans happy. Sholo's going to advance. Can I say that? Look, is it possible Sholo will lose this game after scoring 70 points? I don't think so. They pick it up, race down the sideline, and there's a convoy for Nash Brewer. And I think he's going to deliver the goods right here. 
Nash fighting, battling, and he's in the end zone. No, no, just, you gotta give it to him. Just short. Give it to him. Just shy of the end zone. Oh, you gotta give it to him. <laughs> okay, I think that right there took care of it because Sholo, barring a disaster, should get points out of this very short field possession they'll get on this big return of the kick. I mean, guys, it's all about the angles. When the guy is that fast on the other side, you've got to work your angles. Do we have a marker down? No. Uh, there, Nash is a little gassed, as, as you might say. So they had to bring him out, and they're going to put Pedraza in at quarterback. Hey, why not? Why not? Your lead is 28 points. Pedraza himself will take it in for a one-yard touchdown run. And Sholo tacks on. You've got to be kidding me. I, I, I don't know that I've ever quite seen anything like this today. What we are experiencing here. I have not. I have not, and I don't know what... Uh, I, I will go out on a limb and say that this is the most points in a playoff game that Shola has scored. Yeah, I think that's fair. I'll also tell you this. This has got to be one of the highest scoring 3A state playoff games in history, 77 to 42. I can't imagine how many times, and I can't imagine it's been very many times that anybody has scored this prolifically as we grab a timeout and word in from Summit Healthcare, everybody, 77-42. Shello in front, the Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week, presented by Hatch Toyota. Summit Healthcare is committed to your healthcare experience from start to finish. They invite you to take advantage of the Summit Healthcare Retail Pharmacy. The pharmacy is conveniently located in Summit's outpatient pavilion, just steps away from the hospital. And most of Summit's clinics may accept most insurance, including Medicaid, Medicare Part B, Medicare Part D, First Care, and IHS. Prescriptions are ready in just minutes, and you get curbside delivery too. The Summit Healthcare Retail Pharmacy, because Summit is committed to meeting your pharmaceutical needs. Hey, we're back into it, and I just want to thank our very good friend from the AIA, the Arizona Interscholastic Association, Jose Garcia, who must be following the broadcast. Jose, hope you're enjoying things where you are in a climate-controlled studio somewhere, I'm pretty sure, as we watch a Carson Cooper Personal foul as he flings the return man. I'm not sure what precipitated that, but Josh Morales just got flung out of bounds. And that'll that'll be a 15-yarder and a personal foul on Cholo. Because I'm watching Gage Reed had limp about out there for Cholo. Well, yeah. it's the way he threw him and he was out of bounds. He was like that close enough to out of bounds. All he had to do was just let him go. He's going to go, but he just... Flung him out, and that's why you're going to get the 15-yard penalty. The fling. Okay, I want to thank Jose Garcia for checking in with us and letting us know that this is a new school record for points scored in a game for a Sholo, and that's playoff or otherwise. It's a brand-new record as you watch it there on the, uh, again, the fling out of bounds. Uh, new school record for the Cougars. They previously had... Uh, most the points ever scored 76 so now 77 establishes a Sholo record and we've got to be somewhere in the in the neighborhood of a 3a state overall points scoring record in a playoff game here is a pass downfield wide open pass caught more more points on the way but we do have a marker down is it going to be a 57 yard touchdown pass to Lailson I don't think so it's a marker down right there in the middle of the backfield Somehow, yeah. Lailson got wide open. Jaden was, there was just nobody in the zip code around Jaden, and he walked in for the touchdown. Yeah, that's coming back. That was a hold, obvious uh, hold right there on the left tackle of Paradise Honors. And uh, the, the DB, Bryce Adams there, he saw the, the quarterback running, and he kind of decided, he started up toward the line of scrimmage. That's what allowed the receiver to get way behind them, and they completed it. But fortunately for Adams, there was a hold on the play. So this one is going to be marked back from what was the original line of scrimmage, the 43-yard line. 
They mark him back to the 30 after the step off. Baker will drop back to throw, and on the run, he's got, again, a man wide open downfield. The catch is made, and if it was just a little bit more in stride, that would be another touchdown. Big play gain to the Sholo 32-yard line. Let's count that one up. That's, I got that as 48, no, excuse me, 38 yards on the pass play downfield. Once again, just uh, another Paradise Honors receiver getting behind the DBs of the Cougar defense. Again, that will be addressed, I guarantee, during the week before next week's game against Thatcher. Well, well, here's the deal. They're playing without a safety over the top. And if it weren't for the fact that Sholo has been so prolific in scoring themselves, that would be a huge liability. Here's a shot to the end zone, and that is in and out of the hands of the receiver. Again, they had beaten the defender on that far side but could not hold on to the Gage Baker pass. No, I understand that, that they, they've been playing without a safety deep over the top because they, they feel confident in their, in their coverage of man-to-man, -man. but tonight it's been a little bit exposed here by Paradise Honors. Uh, but, uh, you know, Floyd, we got some scores you were mentioning. Uh, Thatcher defeating or winning tonight 56-35. to Push Ridge. Victorious over Round Valley, 44 to zero. And at East Mark, they had a one touchdown lead over Sabino. Just, just a one touchdown just lead. Just a one touchdown. Second down and 10. That'll be a, a pass caught for first down yardage. And we'll see who's on the receiving end over on the far sideline. I believe that's Garrison asked who dropped the touchdown pass a moment ago. But this time catches it for a 12 yard gain and a first down. And that just continues to add to the, the totals in this passing game for Paradise Honors. And, I mean, this guy is for real, isn't he? Let's look at his numbers. 25 of 42 for 451 yards and six touchdowns so far. That's Gage Baker. No wonder he leads the entire state in passing. And he's going to roll out, and he's got all kinds of pressure. He'll go down. They finally get to him. That's been tough for them to do. Sholo's got great pass rush special, specialists all across that front, and they finally are able to get to the quarterback, and the guy that gets credit is uh, uh, Kyle Irvin with the quarterback sack and a big loss on the play. Something that Baker's going to learn over the offseason is you have to learn to throw that away. Don't try to dance around. When you see three green jerseys in front of you, just throw it away, live to see another day, another down without losing that much yardage. And they lost 15 yards. Here's a pass caught left side. And well, it's going to get back a bunch of the yardage lost, but not all of it from just a moment ago. That's asked again on the receiving end. Just couldn't quite get free, and he gains 13 yards on the play. It brings up third down and 12. Again, Paradise Honors not quitting. You got to love to see that from your opponent right there. After giving up 77 points, but you're still fighting to get, get points and get it to maybe 50. So third down, handoff, and that'll be the first time that that young man has gotten a chance to run from scrimmage. Logan Pruitt, a junior running back for Paradise Honors, and Logan is able to pick up, call it the tw uh, seven yards, seven yards, fourth down and five on the way. How about that? How about that, Floyd? If Paradise Honors is able to score, that you score 50 points, and you still lost by four touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's unprecedented for sure, Baker. To the end zone, the little back shoulder out there on the corner. Is it a catch? No, it's incomplete. There's still a lot of time left. By the way, this second half has been unbelievable. We got 544 remaining. And in the second half of this game, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine touchdowns scored between these two teams. And it all started with Cody Brown coming in in the third quarter. Cody's like a rabbit's foot. 
You know what I mean? He's like a giant six foot tall rabbit's foot over there. It's a huge rabbit that came off, you know? Yeah, I, he is. Let's talk about it a little bit with 544 left in this game. Let's talk a little bit about next week's matchup. Can we do that? Sholo and Thatcher? Sholo and Thatcher at Mountain yeah, Point. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, Thatcher does not have the ability. And in fact, I don't think uh, either Thatcher or Eastmark, if Eastmark is able to win tonight, beat Sabino, and then beat Push Ridge and get to the final. Uh, there just isn't a team remaining that, that throws the ball like Paradise Honors. So the Cougars, you know, who have a stout run defense. I just love their chances at this point. They look so good tonight. The one thing they won't get is they won't get the advantage of playing on the frozen tundra because in Scottsdale next week, it's going to be probably pretty nice weather for both teams. Hand off right side. Carson Cooper gets a chance to race around with the football a bit. Cooper has chased out just shy of a first down. Well, I think uh, what, what many of us believe next week to be even though it's technically the semifinals that it's going to be basically the championship game 1a between these two teams because i know it's power points and power rankings and that's what got that's what uh, sholo was number four but i believe if there was a true rankings the show would be number two and they would have been on the other side of the of the bracket and they'd be playing Thatcher in the championship game. But next week is going to be a championship bout between Sholo and Thatcher. By the way, a 10-yard mark off against Sholo. I believe that was a hold. I didn't see the call, but I think that's a holding call. 77-42, to 42, the Cougars in front. And uh, Ray Pedraza is swarmed under by that Panther, that Panther defense. The cat fight continues here in this fourth quarter as we approach the five minute mark remaining don't forget in our post game we will announce the sports on radius player of the game presented by white mountain regional medicals and i already know who that is by the way I, i'm gonna i'm gonna go through the machinations and the formality of letting you guys all vote on it but i already know who the player of the game is byron do you think you know yeah i i i know you sure about it? I'm sure about it. That was a five-yard loss on that previous play, by the way. Second down and 21 for the Cougars. They hand it off to Jet Walker. Get familiar with that name. You're going to hear Jet Walker a lot. He gains five yards right there. You're going to hear him a lot in the years to come. He's a freshman for Sholo, and he is fantastic. And we have watched him all season, Byron. If he wasn't playing behind Ryan Kishman, Ray Pedraza, he would unquestionably be a 15, 1,800-yard rusher, I think, this year. Uh, no, no question about that, uh, Jet Walker. Living up to his name of Jet, he's got the wheels, he's got the speed. And when Ryan Kishpaugh was was down with his injury, who came through but Jet Walker was able to, to carry the load while Kishpaugh was out with that, that injury for a few weeks. Here's another guy that can run the ball for you, Carson Cooper, out there on that edge. You see him with a little cutback. And Cooper with the nice pickup to make it fourth down and eight let's check and see where they spotted the football how about an eight yard gain on that last play for the cougars the penalty earlier is going to put them into a, a fourth down and a fourth down and eight situation and for only i believe the second time today could look through but my drive chart is now a my drive chart is like an encyclopedia of information We've seen so much activity and so many changes of possessions. Only the second time that uh, Sholo's punted, and Nash Brewer gets a tremendous roll out of it. That's his second putt inside the 10. Well, let's see. That's a... I think that's a 59-yard punt by Nash, and they'll mark it down right at about the 7-yard line. Paradise Honors has that lengthy field in front of them here with two minutes and 54 seconds remaining 
in the ball game. Floyd, I'm going to make a prediction on uh, next week's uh, first semifinal game. Okay. That, that's going to be between Push Ridge and most likely East Mark. I'm going to say Push Ridge wins that game. Push Ridge is going to play the winner of the Sholo Thatcher game. And if you're Push Ridge, you're in a little bit better field because you're having two heavyweights go after each other in the game before yours. So you're going to call that today? I'm calling it today. Okay. All right. Here's a little pass. A little pass caught out on the near side of the field for a no gain. The young man who hauled the pass in does not have a name attached to his jersey, number 45. You have no idea who that is. Gage Baker from the gun. He's got a running back with him. Draw play. Handed off. That is Quentin Daly with his first carry of the game. So Paradise Honors is just going to give some, some other guys an opportunity to do something here. That was a five-yard pickup on that play. Third down and four. Paradise third, down honors. And third down and five. Pardon. Yeah, Paradise Honors also getting some young guys. They're young. They're putting in younger guys for that playoff experience here tonight in this quarterfinal game against Sholo. Pistol set. Mix up in the backfield. Daly zigged when he should have zagged, and so Baker had to eat the football, and he ends up losing three yards on that play. Well, we're closing it out, everybody. Sholo about to celebrate. The fans have stayed tonight here on this cold, cold night. What are we down to, 28 degrees yet? 20, yeah, 27. But it, you're, you brought up, that's a great point, Floyd. This, tonight, these fans have done a great job. Uh, one of the best jobs I've seen all season long. They've been here, stood out, and they have been loud as, uh, the loudest I have heard all season long. Well, they're feeling it, and they understand the enormity of the moment and the very fact. That they understand that this is the last time to see their team at home this year. Well, it'll be interesting because the Sholo Cougars are going to need this kind of support in the semifinal game going up against Thatcher. No doubt about that. We'll talk about the uh, game time and location for you on that state semifinal. The Cougars will travel to the Valley. Neutral side take on the Thatcher Eagles. The undefeated Thatcher Eagles, 12-0 on the campaign so far. And ranked number one in 3A football. Cholo kneels on it. They'll have to snap it one more time. They can snap it any time after, after there are 40 seconds remaining and then they'll not have to do it again. Look at this, 77-42. I, I don't know what the state record is for most points scored between two teams in a playoff game. I have a strong belief that this is one of the highest scoring, very near the top, if not the most ever. 77-42. Now, there probably have been 1A football games where there's been more points scored in a playoff game than this. But outside of the 1A, just can't imagine it. And what a win. What a win for Sholo. I agree. That's uh, the most points here. Great victory for the Sholo Cougars, but give credit to Paradise Honors. Look, Sholo's got a great defense, and they put 42 up on this defense of the Sholo Cougars. Well, as we get set, go out to a break here and prepare for our postgame wrap-up. We will announce the Sports Zone Radio's player of the game. It's presented by White Mountain Regional Medical Center. We'll do that here in just a moment. I don't think there's any doubt about the player of the game. Who do you got, Sonia Simmons? Who do you got? Wow, there's some doubt, I guess. She's uh, casting a vote that wasn't the vote that uh, that you were expecting. That, that I'm that I'm that I'm casting. Okay, so she can't. She gives a vote to somebody else. We'll find out about all that. We'll do that here in just a. A couple of moments in our in our post game, everybody. But this big victory means that two White Mountains teams remain 
alive in the postseason because, well, Holbrook, not necessarily a White Mountain team, but a team in our coverage area. Holbrook lost big to Wilcox tonight. Round Valley lost big at Porsche Ridge tonight, so they're out. Cholo remains, and the Muggion Mustangs remain. They are playing in the 1A state championship tomorrow night at 6 p.m. at Coronado High School. And what about Snowflake? They start next week. Yes. Yeah, and, I, and you're right about that. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about playoff, right, right. current playoff teams. But, yes, Snowflake will be and in all likelihood is going to get a top four playoff bracket position to earn themselves. Well, Byron, here's the deal. They're going to get a first-round home playoff game. If they win that, they're going to get a second-round home playoff game. If they win that, they might have a third-round home playoff game, depending on the seating, because at the 4A level, you're at home all the way – until the championship really? game, higher seed is. Wow. How do you like that, huh? Yeah, I like them apples. We might we might have two feet of snow on the ground out there. <laughs> Watching a snowflake uh, snowflake playoff game, everybody. All right. Let's get on to our postgame wrap-up. Don't go anywhere. Celebration on for the Sholo Cougars. They are on to the semifinals. But come on, man. We knew that was coming. Standbys. We're breaking down from... Jolo Ford Stadium right after this. The Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week is presented by Hatch Toyota. Don't go anywhere. It's that time of year again. You can feel the excitement in the air. You know what? Ah! It's our kickoff to savings event at Hatch Toyota in Sholo. And you don't want to miss our award-winning lineup of new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs. $24.99! $24.99! Hut, hut! New Toyota Corollas, Camrys, Ram4s, 4Runners, Tacomas, and Tundras. We have the best inventory in the White Mountains, plus our low price guarantee. And every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our complimentary maintenance plan for two years or 25,000 miles. Two- 286 286 hot hot don't miss our kickoff to savings at Hatch Toyota in the Northern Arizona Auto Mall and hatchtoyota.com keeping the white mountains rolling for 31 years hi this is Chaz Hatch get our statewide low price guarantee on every new Toyota find out more at hatchtoyota.com or visit us today at the Northern Arizona Auto Mall in Cholo We've got a cool deal for you at Naked Mobile. Get the Samsung A11 smartphone free when you activate just one month of our 60 gigabyte plan. Starting at $75 per month, switch to Naked Mobile and get the free Samsung Galaxy A11 smartphone with 60 gigabytes of high speed LTE data each month and you can use your data as a hotspot. We've got you covered with unlimited nationwide talk and text and coverage on America's fastest networks. No contract, no credit check, no hidden fees. Get your free Samsung A11 smartphone at any cellular one store near you or at NakedMobile.com. No matter the occasion, large, small, or just because, the Bloomhouse Floral Designs, located in Pine Top, will create the perfect bouquet to capture your moment perfectly. Offering the widest selection of beautiful and unique floral designs and accents, the Bloomhouse serves as your personal creation expert. We are open to serve you Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 and Saturday from 10 till 4. Same day and rush deliveries are available. Stop by or order online at bloomhouseflorals.com. The team at Beam and Will Drilling is like a great football team. They work hard, they work as a team, and they play to win. Their reputation is second to none, and they proudly call the White Mountains their home, even though they complete projects throughout the entire southwestern United States and beyond. No project is too big or too small for beam and well drilling, so when the time comes for you to punch a hole in the ground, remember the White Mountains' top well drilling team, Beam and Well Drilling. Call anytime, 928-205-7647. Go deep with Beam and Well Drilling. Imagine this, a professional healthcare partner that's concerned about you, your choices, your health, your safety. At White Mountain Regional Medical Center in Springerville, choice and elevating your healthcare experience is the mission of our new CEO, experienced physicians and friendly staff. Whether you need a rapid COVID-19 test, a vaccination, or you're looking to utilize the newest MRI, CT scan, or nuclear medicine technology, White Mountain Regional Medical Center, located in Springerville, is your healthcare partner when choices matter. And White Mountain Regional Medical Center brings you the Sports on Radio's Player of the Game, which we are about to announce here as we kick off our post-game wrap-up on tonight's Sports on Radio. Game of the Week, it's presented by Hatch Toyota. Floyd Simmons along with B-squared Byron Brown. A big thank you as well to Cody Brown for his contributions on the broadcast tonight, which really mostly served as him being a, uh, a lucky charm 
that, uh, you know, saw us experience maybe the highest scoring quarter of football we've ever had here. Uh, there are some, some real unique experiences tonight for us, Byron, in this one. And, and I'm going to say, and I'll repeat again later on, our, our Sports Zone radio player of the game may have put together the single greatest performance by a player in any game we've ever covered at Sports Zone Radio. Just looking back, I can't right off the top of my head think of a greater performance than the one we saw tonight. But here's how amazing it was for Sholo, the guy we're about to announce as the player of the game. He wasn't hands down the winner. We had a couple of votes for somebody else. That's how great the team played tonight. So you had the player of the game who has one of the all-time greatest performances in a Sports Zone Radio broadcast coverage for 30 years and the guy that finished second in the voting behind him had a game for the ages as well Sholo had just a wonderful performance and a victory tonight right right it was all around for the Sholo Cougars but absolutely you know the the person that came in second had had a playoff game for history right sure I mean absolutely you know had probably one of the greater greatest playoff games to have but yet the guy that finished first had just that much better <laughs> that much greater of a game so it's it's outstanding i mean look with 77 points scored here tonight by the Sholo cougars it would come down to two of them that probably had the greatest games in in, in scoring 77 points yeah no no question so so the guy that finished second nash brewer in our voting he got two votes out of seven from our broadcast crew two votes all right, he had a game that's going to be tough for him to top next year as a senior. Okay, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for him to have a better game than the one he had tonight in the in the possible two remaining playoff games he may play in here this season. All right, the guy that gets it hands down, I think he got five of our seven crew votes tonight. That's that's the guy you see on your screen there if you're watching our video broadcast. That is the senior Ryan Kishbaugh unbelievable night tonight for Ryan. Two interceptions. One of those closing out the first half was a 102-yard pick six interception return for touchdown. And and it really was a a, a back-breaking moment in this one for that Paradise Honors team. Defensively, we we saw him flying around, making tackles, doing his work on that side of the ball. Now, on the offense, Byron, he was extraordinary there as well. He rushed for 130 yards on 13 carries. Two rushing touchdowns for Ryan Kishbaugh tonight. And as a receiver tonight, 45 yards receiving. Now that was on one catch, and it was a touchdown as well for Ryan Kishbaugh. What a special night. What an amazing performance. He is the Sports Zone Radio's player of the game presented by White Mountain Regional Medical Center. Yeah, great job by Ryan Kishbaugh here tonight. A senior in your last home game and and to have the game that he had what a tremendous feeling for him carry your your team forward into the semifinals going forward against uh, Thatcher and and uh, just that one big play that was the momentum play right there the big momentum shift in the game was the interception at the end of the half a la Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Arizona Cardinals uh, where momentum just shifted you one team thinks they're going to go in with the lead next thing you know you're down by two scores and that was the paradise honors and that was thanks to ryan kishbaugh well down on the field we're about to talk to nash brewer the quarterback tonight turned in another great performance and i'm looking at a group of sholo players as you watch some of the highlights but you know if we can get a live shot there's a bunch of sholo players that are kind of marching the field i think those are seniors i believe they are all seniors then not all the seniors are in that group because I know that Ryan Kishball is going to speak with us soon, and I don't see his number six down there in that group. Do yeah, you? he is. He's okay. in the middle. So the seniors for Sholo, this is their last time they'll ever play on this field, as a Cougar anyway, and they're walking that field. They're marching it from one end to the other, hand in hand, and and they have they have capped off a, a life of football at home in Sholo together with this historic game where they scored more points tonight and Sholo has ever scored in a football game previous to this. Their school record was 76 points before tonight. 77 points scored against a quality opponent in Paradise Honors. Uh, do we have a camera down there? 
Okay. That word had not received, had not reached me. Let's uh, let's uh, continue our post game wrap up and let's get to some of these interviews with the heroes of the night tonight. Welcome in everybody on tonight's post game wrap up, the Sports on Radio Game of the Week presented by Hatch Toyota, a big one, a school record, seventy seven points put up by the Sholo Cougars in the three A state quarterfinals. They have defeated the number five seeded Paradise Honors Panthers in this one tonight. Sholo with the four seed. They hold service at home in this one, and they'll take a trip to the semifinals. Up next for them, they take on the number one seeded and undefeated Thatcher Eagles. That'll be next Saturday in the semis. Everybody, welcome back in. Floyd Simmons along with B-squared Byron Brown. And we'll talk to one of the heroes on the night tonight. The quarterback for Sholo joins us here now. His name is Nash Brewer. Nash, congratulations. What a win for you and the guys. Thank you, thank you. Look, Nash, you know, you yourself, you put on a great performance tonight. Uh, both sides of the ball, you know, your your work as quarterback here tonight was certainly a big part of a 77-point performance by the team. But tell me how it feels. Tell me how it feels uh, with the way your guys played, rising up to the challenge, getting this big playoff win. Uh, what's that emotion like? Um, I don't know. It's something that, you know, I've never done in my high school career, so it's something big for me. Um, I know my guys are also, like, feel the exact same way because – it hasn't happened for the seniors either. And, yeah, there's not a whole lot to say, but it's just exciting. You know, a lot of times the younger guys, sophomores, juniors playing on a, on a varsity team like this, a lot of times there's, there's pressure that you put on yourself to do something to help the seniors to be able to get that, get that ultimate prize of winning a football game. W- was that something big for you? When you look around a, a great group and a large group of seniors that populate this team, Guys like your teammates, the the Turbo Twins, the Kishbaugh Twins. Do you uh, do you feel like a, a sense of responsibility to do what you can for that group? Um, yeah. I mean, they're obviously great players, and you can't replace them. But the youngins, I guess you can call them, um, really have been stepping up, and you know they're our future. And next year, I'm gonna be playing with those guys, and not Ryan Kishbaugh and Jeremy Kishbaugh and all those seniors. But they're for sure gonna be missed. But I think we can you know, play without them. Well, Nash, you were in the running for the Sports Zone Radio Player of the Game, and that was on the strength of passing for 116 yards and, and a touchdown. But how about your uh, how about your legs tonight? How do they feel after rushing for 164 yards and three touchdowns tonight? You feel pretty good? No, they keep cramping up, dude. I Like, I can't do nothing about these cramps. <laughs> Well, have you tried pickle juice or Pedialyte? I drink pickle juice before every single game. Yeah. Maybe you need to try something else. Yeah, pickle- do you have any, have any recommendations for me? The, the pickle juice ain't working. Well, I, nope, I, not one bit. I, I, I'll put Cody Brown on here in a second. He, he could probably give you some good uh, – yeah, good recommendations. That's what he he, well, he knows all that stuff. I'm telling you right now. But Nash, hey, I have a question for you. You know, just let's let's talk about your opponent real quick. I mean, Paradise Honors, uh, you know, young group, but man, they came up here and really played. I mean, to put 40, 42 points on on you guys. That's a that's that's a tough ball club next door. Yeah, I mean, their offense is their offense is insane. Their offense is incredible and. Our defense had a hard time stopping them at times. We stopped them when we needed to. I felt like we needed to. And, you know, um, props to their offense, but defensively they just could not stop our offense. Hey, Nash. So it's kind of offensively both ways. Nash, I want to ask you about the uh, the, the Nash Brewer special, uh, the quarterback sneak, okay? You, you, you reeled off another big one today from, from the sneak. You you guys went for it on, on a, a very short yard of situation. Might have been fourth down. I can't remember. Third and one. Thir- third and one. You were at your own 45-yard line, and you ran the sneak. We knew it was coming. I've seen it all year. I kind of knew what the result might be, and you certainly made good on it. 55-yard touchdown run out of the quarterback sneak. I don't know how you guys execute that so well, run it so well, but it, it's really on your shoulders, Nash. You do all the work on that. How in the world are you able to, to, to execute that thing and do it so effectively like you do? Uh, you know, it's all about the reads and the zones. Um, sometimes they'll know exactly what's coming, and so they'll all line up in the A-gap. There's like three or four guys in the A-gap, which leaves the B and C open, and you just can't do that. Like, I just saw that, and, and I knew before the ball was even snapped that I saw them shift because they knew it was coming. And I just knew I had to kick it outside because there's no one there. 
I don't know how you do it, young man, but, uh, you know, those teams have to know what's coming by now. Everybody has to know that that's something they've got to prepare to stop, and so far they just haven't figured out how to get it done. Uh, well done by you and the guys. Okay, let's look ahead. Thatcher is next up on the schedule. Have you given, given much thought to playing the Eagles in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, uh, we knew it was coming. We saw the bracket, and we knew if we won all of our games the first two rounds that we were going to play them, and they're a team you cannot sleep on. I mean, we know they're good. But there's no doubt in my mind that we can't beat them, you know. The top four teams all have a big chance at winning the state championship, and it's just going to come down to us executing what we have to do. Great job tonight, Nash. Congratulations. We hope you enjoy this win. Thank you. You got it, Nash Brewer. Byron, what a, uh, what a job done by this young man. I mean, he is just outstanding. He has put it together, and there's something special about Nash, you know. Um, he's, he, he, he may not be the most polished passer there is out there, but he is always, as long as I've known him and I've been watching him play, I coached him back when he was in fifth grade. I was one of his football coaches in youth football. There is something about Nash when it comes to being a gamer, right? A lot of people look at somebody, they look at a quarterback, especially quarterbacks. It's all about mechanics. It's all about footwork. It's all about, you know, the finer points of the game and, and they and they and they gauge that guy on that thing, but under fire in 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 game situation, um, some of those guys fall apart like a cheap suit. So Nash doesn't have the the sharpest uh, mechanics. He's a gamer. You saw that completed pass when he's going down. He got a pass ahead to one of his guys. And it turned into a 20, 21 yard. Um, passes he was in the grasp going down to the ground and he got it away there are things that he does that are so unique to this guy as a football player i just love him he's the best quarterback i've seen in a very long time well there's a reason why he's the player of the year for the 3a northeast region and and we we've seen it throughout the season and uh you know you talk about being a gamer he may not have the 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 best mechanics the sharpest mechanics but he's a gamer he gets it done Somehow, some way, he gets it done. And not only in the sense as a quarterback, but we saw earlier in the season a game in which Ryan Kishbaugh was injured, did not come out in the second half. And Nash Brewer was moved from quarterback to tailback. He was the number one tailback. And they moved Pedraza at, to, at the quarterback position. And guess what? They just handed the ball off to Nash Brewer uh, that game. And Nash Brewer got his yardage and and did it, had a great game then, and and that's that's just co- co- being a competitor and being a gamer, being able to do whatever needs to be done to win that game, and that's what Nash has. He's got just the intangibles, right? You talk about that, the intangibles, and if you don't have it, if you don't have the it factor, uh, you you don't end up with performances as a team, like what Sholo got tonight, setting a school record, seventy-seven points in this one. The Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week is presented by Hatch Toyota. Football fans, thanks for joining us. We, uh, you know, buying a little time right there as, as well during our postgame wrap up while we round up the player of the game. And let's get to that here now. Back in one more time here on our postgame wrap up of the Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week, everybody. It's presented by Hatch Toyota. Time for us to speak with tonight's Sports Zone Radio player of the game. And what a game tonight turned in by the senior running back, receiver, defensive back. He's the Swiss Army knife of the Sholo team. He does it all. And he joins us now. What a game for Ryan Kishbaugh and his team as they win 77 42. They knock off Paradise Honors in the quarterfinals. Ryan, congratulations on your win tonight. Thank you. You're the Sports Zone Radio's player of the game tonight. And you put on a performance, Ryan. This is one of the best performances I have ever seen in a single game in 30 years of calling high school football. You did it both sides, a couple of interceptions. That back-breaking 102 or more yard interception return to close out the first half. Let's begin right there. Talk about that, the moment, the interception, taking it back and going the distance. <laughs> All right, so uh, I just saw the ball. I went up in the air, and then I caught it. And then <laughs> I was running really fast. And I was like, God damn, this is really far. So I almost fumbled, actually. I bobbled it. And then, uh, yeah, 
That's really I don't it. know if you know this or not. You almost got caught from behind. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, I saw Pena. Uh, he was he kind of stopped and like went back, and I was like, oh no, I know there's a guy behind me, so I kind of try to speed up, but yeah. So okay, you're a senior. You've been playing football your whole life. You know, all of us, when we're young people, we, we have dreams about making certain kind of plays, doing certain kind of things. Was that like a dream fulfilled for you right there? Did that punch any, uh, ch uh, check any boxes for you when you had that return? Oh, yeah. Uh, I had this competition with uh, Keaton Clark. He's my cousin. And uh, I always told him, I'm going to get a pick six farther than you. I think his was like 82 yards or something. And I, I just <laughs> did it. So. Well, Ryan, congratulations on uh, you know player of the game presented by you know Sports Zone Player of the Game presented by White Mountain Regional Medical Center and uh, you know a great performance here tonight. Uh, you know Nash Brewer is second. He had a great performance, and and you would think with the performance that Nash Brewer had tonight, he'd be the player of the game. But guess what? I mean, you just had a historical <laughs> one on top of that, and uh, it was a tremendous effort, uh, you know, by by you and the team. But uh, talk about. Uh, you know, talk about a little bit about Paradise Honors. I want to give them a little bit of credit. I mean, they came out here and, and, and played some very good football against you guys. Yeah, they're a good team. Um, I just believe we came out and played better. Um, yeah. <laughs> just like that? Mm -hmm. Just like that. So let me ask you, uh, uh, Ryan, about, uh, let me ask you about a couple of things, first of all. How about, 100 and, uh, how about 130 yards rushing on your night tonight? pair of touchdowns there i mean you know have you had a workout like this in a while you know running up and down the field <laughs> no not really uh the cold got to me it was really hard to breathe tonight mm. uh yeah i felt bad for paradise honors because it's the elevation change and on top of that the cold so probably a hard game for them uh, how about this ryan Sholo scores 77 points tonight. I don't know if you're aware of this, but that's a school record. The previous school record points in a game, 76. You guys score 77. So on top of everything that occurred tonight, on top of getting a quarterfinal win and, and punching your ticket to the semis, you guys set a school record in scoring. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Thank you. Well, um, listen, man, good talking to you. We wish you the best. If your team stays healthy and you guys do the right things, it's hard for me to imagine anybody – having the kind of uh, uh, the kind of speed and athleticism to match what Sholo brings to play on a, on a Friday night and then next week on a Saturday. We wish you the best. Uh, you're going to take on Thatcher. You ready for the Eagles? Oh, yeah. I believe we'll be ready. All right. Go get him. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. That's Ryan Kishbaugh. He is the Sports Zone Radio's player of the game tonight, presented by White Mountain Regional Medical Center. It's a pretty special athlete right there, Byron. Very special athlete. Tremendous game. For for him and his teammates and Nash Brewer and uh, you know, it's uh, you know just one step in the goal that they have at the end of the season, right? They want to be in the championship game. This is one step further that that gets them into that semifinal game against Thatcher. And uh, you know, it's really probably at least in my mind, uh, you know, the game between the two best teams is next week uh, in the semifinals between Thatcher and Sholo, and and we're gonna find out. Uh, Find out what Thatcher has and, uh, you know, see what uh, adjustments the show the Cougars make. Get ready for each other next week. Hey, let's take a look at Ryan's numbers, by the way, as he gathers in the player of the game award tonight. Ryan rushing the football, running the football, 13 carries for 130 yards, two touchdowns, including a 72-yard touchdown run. Actually, you know, when he gained that 72-yard gain, it wasn't a touchdown. How about that, huh? What a night for him, 130 yards rushing. One catch for 45 yards, that was a touchdown. And on the defensive side, two interceptions, including a 102-yard pick six interception return for a touchdown to close out that first half. Ryan Kishbaugh, the Sports Zone Radio Player of the Game, presented by White Mountain Regional Medical Center. Well, football fans, I'm going to – well, and Byron, I'm going to let you out of here, man. I'm going to let you go on see if you can uh, get your, uh, your, your feet warmed up in those fuzzy slippers that are waiting for you by the uh, fireplace. Well, home. I was going to say, uh, does uh, White Mountain Regional Medical Center, do they have uh, you know, stuff for uh, frostbite maybe? Yeah. Because uh, I, I may have to head to Springerville and see what they can do. Uh, you're going to have to give a call to our mutual friend, Carter. <laughs> Carter Anderson will, will will have something for you, I'm quite sure. Okay? All right. All right. Great call tonight on the game. Appreciate having you, man. Hey, well, thank you. Thanks for having uh, uh, having us out here. And, uh, man, what a great game it was. And I just, uh, you know, 
Give thanks to, to God. And I pray for all those traveling, travel safely, and God bless, God's peace. All right, thank you, Byron. And, uh, yeah, those Paradise Honors fans, if any of you are listening on the radio on your way out of town, uh, it was great having you in town. Your team was fantastic. We know it's a young team, and can't wait to see what the Panthers look like next year. They are definitely going to be in the running as contenders for a state championship in 2023, and a, a strong finish out for that club as they put 42 points up on a very good Sholo defense. It's nothing to sneeze at at all, especially on a cold, cold night when we all want to sneeze just a little bit. All right, we're going to grab a timeout. When we return, I'll, I'll run through the numbers one last time for you tonight and wrap up our post game. There will be an abbreviated, very short post game and uh, Ace Hardware scoreboard show coming up. As well, that's all part of the Hatch Toyota Friday night football show. Whatever you do, don't go away. Our post game will continue right after this. Hi, this is Chaz Hatch. I won't lose a deal over a dollar, and you have my word on it. Chaz has been saying that since 2009. The Hatch Toyota team price checks against other dealers to make sure we're offering the best value. But if you come in with a bona fide offer that's lower than what we have on the window, we'll honor it. Our product specialists will show you around, help you with a test drive, and work with you to find the perfect vehicle that fits your lifestyle and budget. They aren't on commission, so they aren't under pressure to sell. With the largest inventory in the White Mountains, Hatch Toyota carries all makes and models of cars, minivans, crossovers, trucks, and sport utilities from all the major manufacturers. Come see us today. Hatch Toyota at the Northern Arizona Auto Mall and at HatchToyota.com. Keeping the White Mountains rolling for 32 years. Hi, this is Chaz Hatch. Get our statewide low price guarantee on every new Toyota. Find out more at HatchToyota.com or visit us today at the Northern Arizona Auto Mall in Sholo. Offers on approved credit. See dealer for details. The team at Beam and Will Drilling is like a great football team. They work hard, they work as a team, and they play to win. Their reputation is second to none, and they proudly call the White Mountains their home, even though they complete projects throughout the entire southwestern United States and beyond. No project is too big or too small for Beam and Well Drilling, so when the time comes for you to punch a hole in the ground, remember the White Mountains' top well drilling team, Beam and Well Drilling. Call anytime, 928-205-7647. Go deep with Beam and Well Drilling. Summit Healthcare is always adding members to their professional team. Right now, Summit Healthcare proudly welcomes Dr. Keith Amaral, MD. Dr. Amaral graduated from Texas A&M University School of Medicine. He completed his pediatric residency at SSM Health Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital in St. Louis, Missouri. Dr. Amaral will join Summit Healthcare Pediatrics specializing in pediatric medicine. Attention! Did you know that you may be eligible to receive a free data plan with 60 gigabytes of LTE data to use as a hotspot every month? If you live on tribal lands and are on a government assistance program like WIC, SNAP, Lifeline, Pell Grants, or Medicaid, Cellular One can help. Just ask for the Cellular One ACP plan. It comes with unlimited data and a 60 gigabyte LTE data hotspot. Get your free ACP plan at any Cellular One store today. ACP is a government benefit program and customers must qualify. Some restrictions apply. Limited time only. Non-transferable. Limited to one line per household. Hey, we're back here live at uh, Sholo's, uh, Sholo Ford Stadium, the site of tonight's 3A State quarterfinal showdown. And the number four ranked Sholo Cougars have knocked off number five Paradise Honors. Final score 77 to 42. Final look through the numbers. And I'm going to do the best I can to try and breeze through the scoring recap because there was a lot of scoring tonight, as you know, 77 42. And for Sholo, that's a team school record for points in a football game the scoring began tonight by actually paradise honors on their opening possession they were able to take the ball 72 yards on a scoring drive 11 plays into that gage baker hooked up with coleman burke uh, burkhart for a one-yard touchdown pass points on the board two-point conversion made it eight nothing paradise honors on top early Sholo got the ensuing kickoff and then went 80 yards in just five plays to get points on the board at the 719 mark of the first quarter. Nash Brewer to Ryan Kishbaugh, 45-yard uh, touchdown pass, followed by the two-point conversion, and we were tied 8-8. Eight to eight. After getting the ball on a turnover on downs, Sholo got Ryan Kishbaugh into the end zone for a second time. An eight-yard touchdown run this time for Ryan. Two-point conversion was good. 16-8 to eight, still in the first quarter, the lead for Sholo. Cougars would get on the board again in the second quarter after a 15-play possession. 
they ended up getting a Calvin Morgan 22-yard field goal. That came with 7.14 on the clock in the second quarter. That made it. Sholo 19-8 in front. Paradise Honors scored immediately after that. They got the ball in the 139-yard line. And then Gage Baker hooked up with Josh Morales on a 61-yard touchdown pass. They were able to get to the end zone. Uh, They did get the point after, and that made it 19-15, the lead for the Sholo Cougars still at that point. Well, the Cougars would strike again very quickly after that. Within a minute, they got Nash Brewer into the end zone on a 55-yard touchdown run. That was the quarterback sneak, and Nash able to outrun that defense for Paradise Honors. Brewer gets in the end zone. The kick was good, and Cholo's lead went to 26-15. One more score for Paradise Honors uh, before the half. It was uh, Gage Baker hooking up with Josh Morales. Make sure I get my numbers correctly here. That was with 3.07 on the clock in the second quarter. Baker hit Morales, a six-yard touchdown pass. And they had cut into the Sholo lead there momentarily. But uh, Jet Walker found the end zone shortly thereafter. Walker was able – I see what's happening here. My uh, my sheet is bouncing around on me. Uh, let's see. It was at uh, Baker to Morales, touchdown pass of six yards, followed by – a Ryan Kishbaugh eight-yard touchdown run. I mentioned that, didn't I? Uh, our sheet is its crazy. It is bouncing all over the place. <laughs> Let me skip on ahead. That third quarter was prolific between these two teams. It began with uh, Gage Baker hitting Jaden Laleson on a 12-yard touchdown pass. The kick was good. Coming out of that third quarter, after a 102-yard Interception return closed out the first half and really felt like a backbreaker for the Panthers. They bounced right back. They were able to uh, recover a fumble, a Sholo fumble on the opening second half kickoff and then quickly get it into the end zone. Again, that was Gage Baker to Jaden Laleson, 12-yard touchdown pass. Kick was good. Sholo's lead cut to 34-28. to That is as close as the Panthers would ever get for the rest of the game. Sholo immediately followed that with a six-yard Jet Walker touchdown run. The kick was good. 41-28, Sholo in front. Paradise Honors came right back and got a 73-yard touchdown pass to Josh Morales. Boy, Morales had a great game to complement the terrific game his quarterback had. Gage Baker had a big one. We'll look at the numbers here in a bit. Uh, that helped cut into the lead just a bit. That made it 41-34. But then there was Nash Brewer, a 16-yard touchdown run on the ensuing Sholo possession. That third quarter was a an absolute uh, fireworks show out here at, at Sholo High School. Sholo jumped in front 48-34 to after that. Then a Ryan Kishbaugh interception, his second of the game. And shortly after that, with 5.15 on the clock, third quarter, Ray Pedraza for Sholo. 19-yard touchdown run. The kick was good. Sholo 55, Paradise Honors 34. After the Panthers gave the ball up on down, Sholo scored again with 35 seconds left in the third quarter. Ryan Kishbaugh, four-yard touchdown run. The kick was good, 62-34, the score at that point. So in that second half, in the third quarter alone, these two teams combined to score six touchdowns and three more touchdowns lay in wait for the fourth quarter. With 9.22 remaining in that Fourth period, Sholo scored on a Nash Brewer 62-yard touchdown run. Two-point conversion, good. Sholo wins, or Sholo leads at that point, 70-34. to 34. The Panthers weren't done. They got a Gage Baker to Coleman Burkhart, 47-yard touchdown pass and two-point conversion with 8.59 remaining in the fourth quarter. That made Sholo's lead 70-42. to 42. And the Cougars scored one more time to establish a school record for points in a game. Ray Pedraza's one-yard touchdown run and point after kick made it. Cholo 77, Paradise Honors 42, and that's your final score in the game tonight, everybody. The statistics provided by our statistician, the lovely Sonia Simmons, look like this for Sholo. 538 yards of offense in a playoff game. Impressive. 15 first downs for the Cougars tonight. Time of possession was 
fairly evenly split. Shola had the big first half possession advantage. The Panthers had the second half advantage, and we almost finished in a in a virtual, you know, dead heat with time. Shola had the ball 27 minutes, 24 minutes and 27 seconds. Slight advantage in the second half, so time of possession really was no factor at all. 422 yards rushing for the Cougars, 116 yards passing tonight in the game. The Cougars turned the ball over one time on that kick return fumble. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, you know, that's it. That was it, the one turnover. Played a pretty clean game tonight. Penalized 11 times for 95 yards, Sholo was. Nash Brewer, he was 5 of 15 for 116 yards passing, one touchdown. Ray Pedraza threw the ball once. It was incomplete. On the receiving end of those five passes completed tonight, didn't really need the forward pass much, did they? Ryan Kishbaugh caught one pass for 45 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Colton Cloyd got to play in the game today. Congratulations to the senior who's playing injured and really has not been able to get out there in much action. But they got him on the field, and they got a 31-yard pass to Colton. He got to contribute in his senior season in this big playoff win. We want to say congratulations to him. That 31-yard pass reception matches his jersey number, 31. Uh, Let's see, Colton Tidwell caught one pass for 21 yards tonight. Ray Pedraza, one catch for four yards in the game for Sholo. Running the football, 400-plus yards as a team. Nash Brewer led it, seven carries, 164 yards, and three touchdowns tonight, including a, a touchdown of 62 yards and a touchdown of 55 yards tonight. What a performance by Nash. Ryan Kishbaugh, 13 carries for 130 yards for the Sports Zone Radio's player of the game. Two touchdowns rushing for Ryan. So he had two touchdowns rushing. He caught a touchdown pass. And he returned a, a uh, interception 102 yards for a touchdown. That's why he is the player of the game in this one tonight in one of the all-time great individual performances we've ever seen at Sports on Radio. Hey, listen, Ray Pedraza ran the ball 14 times for 80 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, what a great performance by Ray that gets lost in these other performances by Brewer and Kishbaugh. I mean, Pedraza played great and... And he was the workhorse in the backfield that carried the ball more than anybody and had 80 yards. I mentioned a pair of touchdowns, 5.7 yards a rush tonight for Pedraza. What a game. Jed Walker carried it five times for 26 yards and one touchdown. Carson Cooper, two carries for a total yardage of 22, matching his jersey number. Weird numbers stuff tonight in the game, isn't it? A victory for the Shola Cougars. Let's look at Paradise Honors real quick because they deserve some mention. And I'll tell you this about this team. They return a ton of guys. They are they are junior and sophomore heavy out there. Gage Baker, the quarterback, is going to return. And some of his receivers will be back. And some other great uh, uh, players on this team are coming back for next year. Paradise Honors, pencil them in right now as a, a contender to win the state title in 2023. And you know what? Maybe next year we'll see these guys again facing off at some point in the playoffs. And it would be certainly a big grudge match between the two of them. Paradise Honors racked up almost as many offensive yards as Sholo. They had 523 yards. We had over 1,000 yards. Are you guys listening? We had almost 1,100 yards of offense in this game tonight, boys. Almost 1,100 yards. This was a track meet out there. It's amazing. Uh, 17 first downs for Paradise Honors. Had uh, time of possession, 23 minutes, 23 seconds. They ran the ball for 59 yards. They passed the ball for 464 yards tonight. Penalized eight times for 47 yards, and they turned the ball over twice on the two Ryan Kishbaugh interceptions. Gage Baker, the Panthers quarterback, was 27 of 45 Completed 60% of his passes for 464 yards, six touchdowns, two interceptions in the game tonight. What a performance by Baker. It was fun to watch him play. His leading receiver was Josh Morales. Eight catches, 186 yards, three touchdowns. Also, Coleman Burkhart, five catches for 102 yards, a pair of touchdowns. Garrison asked seven catches for 95 yards in the game. Hank Stabler, the fourth leading receiver on the team, caught five passes for 77 yards. What a game by this this uh, this uh, passing and receiving crew. 
for the Panthers. Jaden Lailson, two catches for 17 yards in the game tonight. For the Panthers, they were led on the ground, by the way, by Vance Cooper. 15 carries for 55 yards led the way for the Panthers. And while that was an incredibly impressive performance by this Panthers team, putting on that aerial show tonight, it certainly wasn't enough. Sholo gets the victory tonight, everybody. Final score, 77-42. And this one, Sholo on to the state semifinals. They'll play next Saturday evening. Coronado High School, and they're going to take on the Thatcher Eagles, who won their game tonight. They knocked off uh, They knocked off their opponent uh, and uh, handily did so at home at Eastern Arizona College. Well, I want to thank our outstanding crew for the job they did tonight, led by our producer, Derek Simmons. Thank you to our technical director. That is Fernando Quintana. And, of course, our camera operators tonight included Sean Ulvestad, Leonard Keone and uh, Derek Simmons, producer, also handling a cam for us. Thanks goes to our statistician, the lovely Sonia Simmons, and my broadcast partners, B Squared Byron Brown and Cody Brown for the entire crew. I am Floyd Simmons. Thanking you for joining us, reminding you of the final score tonight. Sholo, a school record 77 points in their victory over Paradise Honors, 77 42, the final. An abbreviated Ace Hardware scoreboard show coming up in a few moments. We'll see you in the semifinals coming up soon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. God bless you. Back to Sholo High School in these sub-freezing temperatures in just a few moments. Don't go anywhere.